Ready to roll? Right, so it's Colin, we could just, if you could do your introduction, how you... Alright. Hello folks, uh, thanks Johnny for taking the time out to uh, ask me some questions. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, I've kept birds since I was six years old. I'm probably better telling you, or quicker telling you what I haven't kept and bred over the years. Um, fantails, but not racing pigeons. I'm a great believer if you can't do something right, don't bother starting at all. Um, 30 years in the poultry industry, three years at agriculture college doing poultry and uh, avian species, uh, 20 plus years doing homeopathy and natural products. Um, you see, I'm, I'm learning every day. Um, we make no medical claims for what we do, but it's it's all about results. Uh, my attitude is, you know, why would you pay for something if you don't get results? You know, so. So yeah, I appreciate the time with Johnny here and I'm, I'm open to any questions at all you have. So I'll use Johnny, any right. questions? I'll get some questions and I'll read the questions that I've got to some of the boys that's given me over the, the week when I asked them. And Jason Bright asked me, when and what time do you use Young Bird Sickness products as he always catches two weeks after coming off the darkness system? Right, interesting question. What, what I want to do to start off with is to get away from this word young bird sickness because it's not just in young birds, it's in every single bird. And what I'm going to do is just to set, set the stall out, a little story here about what you need to know. Oh, there's an ice cream van. Hi. <laughs> right, what, what you need to know is that this little story will explain everything. The one word I want you to take away from this tonight is the word stress. You've probably heard me say about it before and that's all I talk about because 99% of your problems are caused by stress. So as an 18 year old sitting in uh, agriculture college in my third year in a microbiology class, the lecturer comes, with a pig comes in with a pigeon in the basket. That's Johnny away to get an ice cream for us. So he brings the pigeon out of the basket and he says, we're going to find out what bacteria is growing in this bird's mouth. So he gets a swab out, swabs inside the bird's mouth, rubs it on a, a little glass petri dish with growth medium, puts the lid on it with a black marker, writes A, and then he proceeds to walk around the, the lecture room doing his talk with the pigeon tucked underneath his arm. 10 minutes up, he says, we'll find out what bacteria is growing in this bird's mouth. And I'm sitting there as an 18 year old thinking, he did that 10 minutes ago. So he gets another swab, swabs inside the, the bird's mouth, puts the bird back in the basket, rubs it on another petri dish with growth medium, puts the lid on it, and writes B. She says, right, they'll go into the incubators, and when we come back next week, they'll have cultured different bacteria, we'll get your textbooks out and find out what, what's growing. So we come back the following week, you get our textbooks out, he brings out A, right, there's a bit blue, a little bit green, Streptococcus, Staph aureus, pretty common stuff. B. World War Three. every colour of the rainbow you could think of. Wait a minute, there's Salmonella, there's E. coli, there's this, there's that. There was 12 different things that we got out of that culture that we identified. Now, the bottom line is, we thought that bird was relaxed, tucked under his arm, but the little bird was stressed that it helped. And under that stress, everything in that multiplied. Coxie as well would have multiplied. Coxie senses stress in a bird or an animal and it says to itself, this host is going to die because of the stress. And so what it does is that it starts stripping the nutrients out of the food to produce eggs to get out of that host into another host and be picked up by something else that will carry on the cycle. And the stress that the coxie produces causes other things to multiply. So you imagine 10 minutes of what we thought was relaxed under stress was phenomenal what was multiplying. So all I want you to do is remember that under stress everything multiplies. So you're talking about young bird sickness, it's not one thing, it's everything multiplying. That's why you see slightly different things and the incubation period could be anything up to 10, 10 days of when it starts to multiply and multiply and stress and stress and stress. And putting the birds into darkness, yeah, it's a stressful time. It's like that little bird being held, you know, for 10 minutes, it's stress, wait, what's going on? Can't see what's happening, you know, I can barely, you know, it's all stress. And you're doing that to try and get the birds to molt quicker. There's ways to do it without putting them under that stress. 
You know, you want the birds to be relaxed, but you don't want to stress them. On the data system, Colin, with the stocks, the main flights for dropping, yeah. it puts them into the a mole as in head, yeah. cover feathers, ribbon. Yeah. it stops the main feathers for these yeah. are racing. Yeah. You can put a bird into a mole, start a bird going into a mole by pulling the two main tail feathers out, and that will start the sequence of feather loss. Right. You know, so you, you can manipulate when, when but, birds mope. But that would bring in the, the second reason the primary would drop the shoot, would, and we don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's other ways to bring the bird to the mope. Right. You give the right nutrition, you give some nutrients out like we've got, uh -huh. you know, you're laughing. The birds fly through the mope. Fly right. through the mope. But you're not putting them under stress. So we'll, we'll put... The pigeon fraternity really put the, they put the birds on the darkness, say, March, when the daylight yeah. starts getting, and then they'll take them through to maybe the longest day, yeah. June, yeah. 21st, some people's end of May, but yeah. usually 21st of June. After that, then you'll see, just what you've heard, heard now, for, for say the end of May, 10th of May, eh, 10th of June, sorry, yeah. end of July, it's boom, young bird sickness. Yeah. Yeah. And then, if you don't get it, you're guaranteed to get it, as you say, with Wait stress. On. The yep. first or second race to come back, maybe you'd top the feather yep. one, then the following week, yep. down. Yep. Big birdies loss losses. Do you put, you don't put adult birds into darkness? Well, I'm not going to too many my secrets. Right, okay. <laughs> but no, no. Okay. You can put, you can put you adult can. birds, yes, yep. to hold them well yep. as well. Yeah. Yes. But these birds are more mature, they're more stress-free. Uh -huh. they'll, they'll cope with it better. Their immune system's it's, better. It's the one word, stress. Uh -huh. Stress is pulling all these things that go back to the bird, 10 minutes being held, everything's multiplying. Right. And over that period of time, it's built up good. And every bird reacts differently to stress. You and I will, can do two different jobs or have stress, and we'll both react differently to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you might come there with a little cold, and I'll get pneumonia. Right. They're under stress, uh -huh. you know. But it's the same for the birds. I say, try and get away from talking about young birds thing. It's, it's everything in the bird. Well, see, see what you're saying about young bird sickness. Do you think a wolfie, a young bird, right? It gets through the young bird stage. It's had young bird sickness. It now goes on to be an adult bird, yearling right. stage. Yep. You breed off that yearling bird. Yep. The young wolf it goes into the loft on whatever system could be natural darkness, whatever it is. That yearling, that yearling now doesn't get sick. They do. But I don't, it's, it's the stress right. that you do. Because I, I get phone calls from a lot of people. It's in my yearlings. It's in my, my late breads. It's in my right. older birds. I've got it in adults. And it's the same symptoms. So it's carrying what, it's still what, to its offspring. So that's how you're getting all it year these, in, yeah, year out. All these things are in every bird. Right. All these things. And when you bring a bird in, quite often the stress of that bird coming in, uh, you know, it's almost like me coming to your house here. You know, right. you've got your family here. You don't know me. I come in. I put the kettle on. Start making myself a cup of tea. Everyone sit down in the, the seat there, and I, I turn the telly, the telly over, and the whole family's, "Who's this guy? What's happening? What? That's your mug, Dad. You know, he's using your mug. He's turned the telly. He's sitting on your seat." The stress of all that uh, causes things to multiply, and so when you bring a new bird in, that's stress. There's pecking orders. There's there's, there's a rule, you know, and it's, there's always stress of some sort about, you know, and that bird might bring something slightly different in. And within that bird being five minutes in, can spread it around. Right. You know, I the, one of the first questions I ask people: Have you brought birds in recently? You know, and quite often, no, I haven't. But there was a, a stray pigeon landed in. It was in for half an hour. Or it was in for five minutes, and then all of a sudden, a couple of days later, the birds are going down. That stress is like somebody coming to your house for five minutes. You don't know. You know. Mm -hmm. so, what are you doing in here? You know, get out. You know, stress, and that's what passes something on different on. The other birds under stress will pick it up. Right. And multiply. The next question I've got here is Peter Drummond. I read that the young bird sickness again. Right. Becoming more common with breakouts increasing year on year. No. What you've already explained this. What, in your opinion, is causing this? It's stress. Stress is the cause, but what happens is antibiotics. You can get fifteen pigeon men and women looking at a picture of birds. And they'll tell you 15 different things that's wrong with them. I think it's this, I think it's that. And you've got 15 different answers how to, to get rid of it. You know? Mm -hmm. And if it's not, kill the bird. You know? You can't just kill the bird because 
If it's in that bird, it's in every single bird. Are you going to kill them all eventually when they all eventually go down? You need to find out what the issue is, you know. And they say antibiotics, the word antibiotic means against life. The fact that it says don't give the chicks because it kills them, mm -hmm. what's it doing to the adult birds? It's taking good and bad bacteria out of the birds. The immune system's down. You cannot have a void. The bird is made up with its gut and the immune system of good and bad bacteria. And there's a balance, you know. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a void. If you wipe everything out, it's gonna it's in the same environment to pick these things up again. Mm -hmm. So quite often what comes in, you know, people say, Oh, I gave it antibiotics and it picked up. Of course it picked up because you've got rid of the bad, but you also got rid of the good. And the bird's gonna have to pick something up. You know, and quite often it's worse than what it gets, but what you, what's been in the bird is still in an environment. You're not gonna have a sterile environment, it's gonna pick different things up. And they'll come in at different levels and, and multiply at different levels. Quite often you get away with it, get away with it. But what I find is people who are regularly on antibiotics, when they sell a bird to someone else and they're not kept in the same system, the bird's good for nothing. Good for nothing. See when you get to kind of peak fitness. Yeah. Right? And I mean with anything, football player, anything like that. Yeah. You get to a peak, your highest fitness. And people say, I've, I've seen it with racing pigeons. That's when they're at a prone to go down. Oh yeah, big time. Because you've got them that high, they'll pick up anything yeah. after that. Big time. So you, you, you've got to peak for that one race, yeah. and if you don't do it, you'll yeah. not get it a second. Yeah, yeah. Olympic athletes, you hear them, oh, they missed it because they got a virus. These people are under stress. They're putting their body to the limits. Uh -huh. And their stress levels are up, you know. That's just why people take drugs. It's to, to get the stress levels down to allow them to perform better. Right. You know, that's the reason mm -hmm. for it. And they're saying, no, can't have drugs because it enhances the performance, you know. But it's a false enhancement right. that gives you the edge against other people, uh -huh. you know. The next one is for BWM Lofts, boy Brian Massey. What would you recommend for a health programme during racing season? This is the start of the week. Right. So that would you say the Monday. Right. The middle of the week. Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. a Friday before basketing, right. and then from a Saturday when they return. Yeah. What would you? What would the health program be for that? The same thing every day of the week. Your bird does not change what it requires every day of the week. You know, it's it's an athlete. You know, when you put an antibiotic in it to clean it out, you're wiping the whole system out. You know, you're putting it under stress. Fresh water, fresh water every day. The biggest percent of that bird is water, you know. Fresh water, it's, it replenishes yourself, it's replenishing the cells. Every time you put something in the water that stops the bird drinking as much, you're putting it under stress hydration-wise. Right. You want it to drink the maximum all the time to keep the system going, you know. It's got a, a lymphatic system that the waste comes out. When you start restricting that and making the bird dehydrated, you're putting it under stress. Food-wise, the same thing. You want fresh, whole fruits. You don't need all these supplements in that. Every time you put something to the bird that affects the gut, flora and fauna, you're affecting the immune system. You're reducing the performance of the bird. So just keep food fresh. Again, people talk about, oh, I increase the protein, I can increase that. You don't make protein from protein. You make protein from amino acids. Essential, non-essential amino acids. And all these things you feed the birds, if it's whole, it's fresh, it's natural, it's complete. What what seeds would you feed to feed amino acids? Amino acids, amino acids Insects. are in everything. Uh -huh. You know, in your peas, in your beans, you know, in wheat, barley, all these all these cereals and grains all have amino acids. They all have slightly different levels of, of you know different elements, but they're all in there. You know, and it's a, it's a case of getting a balanced diet and keeping it the same all the way through. You know, when birds are feeding youngsters, you want to up the the protein. You know, it's still amino acids. I see the biggest bodybuilders in the world, gorillas. They don't eat other animals to get protein. It's all plant-based amino acids that they get that cause the, the muscle. Same mm -hmm. with cows. And if you look at the size of the cows, look at the muscle on them. Beef cow, grass. Grass. That's turned into to protein, you know. Birds, insects. Yeah. Food's got to be three things. It's got to be palatable, 
There's no qualifier for the don't eat it, you're stuffed. It's got to be nutritious, it's got to have the right nutrients, and it's got to be digestible. You know, you can have the most palatable, nutritious food, but if the bird can't digest it, you're stuffed. It's going to be under stress. You know? Going to the water column, see, going back to the olden days and then to the nowadays, and they talk about pH level. Yeah. They talk about leaving it for 24 hours to yeah. sit. Yeah. Or they say, don't give them tap water. Yeah. Do give them rain water, give them water. Yeah. They're different. All roads lead, lead to Rome. Yeah. Out straight out of the tap, straight to the pigeon. Quit, yeah. Quits the effects. Like the advantage and disadvantage. Advantage, disadvantage. Water's a certain pH level. And because of certain areas, you know, you've got hard water, you've got soft water, you've got chlorine put in in the summertime because of the bugs and that. These all affect the level. You know, I've seen some dramatic changes with people who have got bad areas of water and all of a sudden they go out in a bottle of water and the birds pick up. It's all about the gut flora and fauna. Right. You know, I have people say, oh, two times a week I use apple cider vinegar. Excuse me? That's two times a week you upset the gut flora and fauna. Ah, oh, but it does no harm to the birds. Keep it fresh water and you'll see a difference. What is the benefits of using apple cider vinegar? Apple cider vinegar will, will affect the gut pH. Right. And people think it kills certain things. But when you've got a system that is its own system called the gut with all the different flora and fauna, and you put something in to change that, do no benefit to the bird. The bird has its own immune system. 80% is the gut. And you, you're manipulating it, not for the good. You want to try to keep it as consistent as possible. And say, I've got the who's who bird keepers and the guys who are on top, production, performance, everything, fresh water. You don't think that. If you put something in the water, the bird has no choice but drink it. And that's why you see them drinking less quite often. I'm going to a different subject with the poultry because you're you're right. you're in the poultry industry. Yeah. And it's the same thing as in production. We need need a racing pigeon to win races. Yeah. To produce eggs, yeah. to breed champions. We all try and breed champions. Yeah. But going on to like, the production of eggs, yeah. poultry. Yeah. It's a business, a million pound, well, billion exactly. pound business. Yeah. So would they use side of the mouth for their production levels? No. I don't so know they any don't, farmers. They don't upset the, I know small, uh, small. I know it's a different thing, but yeah. it's always got. What, what's the difference? Yeah. I know some small producers that use it, uh-huh. but why? It's beyond me because all the big commercial boys, some of them because they've got bad water or bad lines, will put a sanitizer in, but it's not. It does affect the gut flora and fauna, but sometimes it's so bad they'll, they'll put it in regular. Because if they don't, there'll be bacteria grow and they're going to have issues with the bird's health. Uh-huh. But no, it's on the whole, it's fresh water. So fresh water, yeah. fresh food. Yeah. But more else. and more companies that I'm dealing with who would have a challenge, health challenge, are putting vitamins, minerals, different things in, but they're now coming away from that. So, going on to vitamins, what's the benefits of feeding... Vitamins, like liquid vitamins into the water for your pigeons. Again, liquid vitamins in water, quite often the, the birds don't drink as much because there's something in it, you know. If you want to give them something, give it to them so they can pick it up if they need it. And the food. Birds aren't stupid. If they're lacking something, they'll look for it, you know. The same with grit. Grit, you should always have there, but not with aniseed. Aniseed's just there to attract it. What happens with aniseed is the bird smells it. Oh, peck, 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 peck. You could put aniseed on stale food and they'll go for it. Grit is there, mainly there for the gizzard and it's it's all like the hen's teeth and things get ground up in the gizzard. You don't want the bird eating loads of grit because then the gizzard's full so it's not going to get as much food in and it's not going to get ground up properly. Mm-hmm. You know, If the bird's lacking in grit, it will go and pick it. It'd even pick it from the wild if it needed it. But yeah, vitamins and minerals as well. If you have minerals there, like it's the animals in the farm. I used to do a, a vitamins, minerals, trace elements that used to be two mils per litre in a drinking water every two months, for five days every two months. And what it would do is it'd put a reserve on the liver and it was slow release and balanced. And we'd use the same formula for the cattle and sheep. And you know yourself being on the farm, yeah. you'd have buckets around and the, the cows would go and have a lick at the... And magnesium and all Yeah. Right. Whereas when we put this 10 mils per head into the, the troughs, you'd find, you'd tell, tell the farmers, look, 
for the next five, six months, they'll not go near the buckets. And quite often, two weeks later, you get a phone call. These animals aren't going near the buckets. I told you that. It's got a reserve on the liver, it's slow release, it's balanced. When they need it again, they'll look for it. So four or five months later, they put the buckets out. And when they saw them going back to the buckets, Colin, I need more to put in the water because they're going back to it. You know, and so they had that reserve. But with the birds, if you're feeding the proper whole foods that are complete, you don't need it. So to round it up with the, the feeding column, if you're feeding good feeding, there's no reason why to feed vitamins. No, no, certainly not in the water right. because the bird has no choice. And again, if you put too much, you, you can lock up the system. You know, you've got a requirement. Them, uh, yeah, you've got a requirement for what you need, a daily thing. And some things you can synthesize yourself, some overload. things you need. But if you get an overload, you can get a lock up. It can cause birds to be infertile, you know. You get the birds that are stiffening up and all this. Quite often that's just a build up. You're better having a deficiency in a bird than an overload. You know, if a bird lacks something, you know, it'll not be right, but it's not as bad as having an overload. Right. You know? You can but, cure the fish, but yeah. the loads harder to Yeah, cure. harder, yeah. If you bring them off, they will come down again. Right. This next question is for Matthew, Alli Matthew Allison Brown. Why so many viruses nowadays compared to 20 to 30 years ago? For instance, a vaccination for paramyxovirus that came out roughly in the mid-80s yeah. to the early 80s. Yeah. We've got to be law. Yeah. To jag for paramyxovirus. Yeah. So, what's your opinion that the viruses 20, 30 years ago are they what they seem to be today? What yeah. Say? yeah. The viruses and bacteria mutate all the time. But when you constantly use antibiotics, 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 it's no good for the bird, it's no good for the environment. You know, when, when you're selecting birds, you're selecting fastest to fastest, fastest to fastest. You're not going to put a nice looking bird that's slow to a fast bird. You're going to produce fast, fastest. You don't even take a single second to think about the bird's immune system. You know, it's in other types of birds, it's shape, size, feathering. You know, mm -hmm. some of these people are, are breeding freaks and they're going down dead ends. But between the selection of your breeding, fastest to fastest, you know, there will be some strains that just by chance have a better immune system. But you're not focusing on that, you're just focusing on that, you know, the performance. And again, these birds are probably a bit more highly strung, you know, like race with stress, uh -huh. for racing, you know. You want a bird that's alert and sharp and ready to go. You're not wanting a bird that's laid back, you know, but that's, that's the issue. And so between that and the use of antibiotics, time and time and time again, these viruses become immune to them. Right. And they bypass them, you know. I was going to say unfortunate, it's not the word, but I've had 25 years for three boys with cystic fibrosis and I know what antibiotics do. And we were always, no, they're not going on regular antibiotics because when they need them, they'll be no good. No, you're still and there's certain things that we know, you know, we're working with three boys, are all different, even though they're the same condition. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no way that we wanted to put them on all the time because when they do, they, 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 out they, they do nothing. But that's what's happened to the birds. Things like Betro, all these things have been so abused, you know, and that's the first thing you go to. It's shocking, it really is, because you just wipe everything out and the immune system's down. Mm -hmm. And I see that between breeding birds that are highly strong, fast to fast, it's it's combination of all these things. Right, the next thing for you is Paul Cum Paul Cunningham. Why he's got this why is his young birds not eaten properly, i.e. They're not eating really fast because right. he's keeping them tight, obviously. Yeah. But it's the same pigeons, the same young birds, he's taking to a liberation point to train them, and they're no, they're going round and round. They're, they're no, they're not coming home yeah. right. That's that's fairly simple to answer. It's you imagine yourself, you're not feeling the greatest. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have a big breakfast? Nah. Are you going to have lunch? Nah, I'm not hungry. Nah. You're not going to eat. When you've got things going on in your body, your body says, no, you, you're not going to eat, you don't feel like eating. It's the same with the birds. If they've got things going on, they're not wanting to eat. They're sickness. They're not wanting to fly. And they're disorientated, you know. You're not feeling the greatest. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not up to flying. I, I don't feel like it, you know. 
Yeah. Okay, you've you've sent me here, but I don't feel like it. I'm not eating. When I'm better, I'll start eating again. You know, they're obviously under stress. Mm -hmm. And I say, young birds, it's got the same as the adults. But they're the ones under stress, and these are the things multiplying. No oh, what? Next is guys, pigeon hall. Boy, that's all. I don't really know, but that's it. What is the base for head goals instead of snorting them? As I said, it be right. crystals and things yeah. like that. You get rid of the mucus and that yeah. out of the, the head. Yeah. That's, that's or, or, or giving antibiotics yeah. to get rid of head yeah. goals and things like that. When you're looking at things like that, you're dealing with the symptoms. Right. Right. Now, you see a bird that's got symptoms, you give it an antibiotic, you do the crystals, it deals with the symptoms. But you've wiped everything out. But the bird's still in the same environment to pick it up again. What we do with the homeopathy is we look at the source and our aim is to switch it on at the source for a specific thing. So, for example, there's two respiratory issues. There's two, two triples we have. One of them is chlamydia, microplasma, and chronic respiratory disease. What you're doing with that, the two mils in the water for five days, you look to switch the immune system on for a minimum three to six months with that one application, okay? Mm -hmm. Now that product will do looking at three different issues. The other one we have is infectious bronchitis, microplasma again, and herpes. Herpes is your fat eye. Your, your, your one eye cold is usually your, your microplasma. Right. There's two different products there and you're getting five different five we came up five, five respiratory issues on a big with, issue over the past yeah, three to four to five yeah, years exactly and again it's going back to quite often somebody will use the three three five plus and they'll put over the birds and the birds pick up and they're more than happy and all of a sudden they get a wee bit something with the eyes if if you told me you had a salmonella problem yeah. and we gave you a product for salmonella it'll we look to switch the immune system on for salmonella. But if really you, what you've got is E. coli, it will still keep on going and you'll still see the results of E. coli. Mm -hmm. You know, a remedy will only work for what's on it. So with the young bird sickness product we've got there, that will switch a number of secondaries on. But if there's, I always describe it like, just imagine there's 15 horses racing and all of a sudden you put a, a product over them and it stops 12 of them. The other three horses has two things it can do. It can either continue on racing and you, you see the odd bird that will still have something going on. The droppings aren't quite right because one of these three horses that are still racing has maybe raced ahead because it's no competition. Or quite often in the vast majority of cases, these other three horses like stop and say, wait a minute, you know, what's happening? And it settles down, you know? And they say, as opposed to wiping things out and having to build up again, we are looking to switch things on and, and boost the immune system. So you're always building up. So regardless of you've got chicks, whatever age they are, adults, youngsters, that's what you're looking to do. Talking when you're spent when you mentioned someone earlier, Colin, right? Yeah. When I seen you first of all, that Essex with the budget budget regard thing you were talking about, you said a thing about seagulls. Yeah. The seagulls, the real great young birds. Oh yeah. Well, the biggest carriers are salmonella. Yeah, exactly. But it's, yeah. it's under control, so the stress hasn't brought it out to yeah. the forefront, so... Yeah, yeah. You've never heard Sir David Attenborough say once, and the seagulls didn't breed this year because of salmonella. No. The, the, as you say, the, the worst carriers of salmonella going. Definitely. You can go to the highest mountain and swamp for salmonella. All these things are in the environment, but it's only under stress that these organisms sense, wait a minute, stress, let's get multiplied, you know. They all want to get into, to stay there, and reproduce, but stress causes them to multiply, thinking this is going to die. Let's multiply. Yeah. Overcrowding yeah. leads to stress. Oh, well. big time. There's mm. always some sort of stress. Uh -huh. People see my birds aren't stressed. A pecking order, you know, and your family will have a pecking order. Your wife will be the boss. That's it, and, definitely. And after that, <laughs> it's the kids, you know. Uh, and, I'm you know, last. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if that's upset, people get upset. Aye. You know. When, when in your products, we'll go into your products, but it's just, I'm just reading the questions yeah. I forgot, but yeah, we'll go into okay. your products at length and how to do everything with the products, but when in your products, when can you give grit 
or minerals when you're doing the five day treatment? You can give drip minerals anytime you like as long as there's no aniseed. Aniseed null and voids the effect. See, when people keep asking me this, and I've had hundreds of messages, yep. and I just say, just don't do it. Uh-huh. Because there's some, there's some fanciers, and I'm not saying this disrespective, no savvy enough to say, that's got aniseed in yeah. it. Because yeah. 90%, sometimes we don't, even that, oh, there's some, yeah. there's some yeah. stuff in there, you, yeah. you can't really smell it, yeah. and it could null and void anything. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So I just say, don't use it at all. Yeah. And then that's the safest way. No, definitely. Five days without grit, yeah. or a manner, it's not going to harm them. No, no, not at all. And then the two days off it, then yeah. go into it, because I've had the five days. Yeah, that's right. The interesting thing about aniseed is, as we know it, it's, it's a gimmick. It attracts birds. You can put aniseed on stale food, and they'll eat it, mm-hmm. you know? You put aniseed, and you put other things in, they'll go for the things with aniseed, and leave everything else. It's the same as I said to you with curry. Yeah. Curry was your tight stale food, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. But yeah, there's a lot of things being put into aniseed and you buy it because all oh, the birds are eating it. But there's a lot of people having sick birds because of it. But the interesting thing was there was um, a chap, John Greenhorn, you know, I was as in going over a few things with him and we were talking about, you know, the remedies not using aniseed and he says, well, funny, there's a few antibiotics that say don't use aniseed. So the interesting thing that came up, and I've spoken to a few other people about this as well, is when did aniseed start to become prevalent? Because if it stops, Homeopathic remedy is switching on the immune system, its source. That's the immune system. And it's stopping antibiotics doing things. What effect is aniseed having on the immune system, on the gut? You know, when did aniseed all of a sudden become something that everybody puts into everything because they want you to buy it and use mm-hmm. it? So is that affecting this and this is this affecting the, the whole viruses and bacteria in the immune system? So that's an interesting question. I remember my, as a kid, I'd go into Uncle's Budgies. Yep. And then the phrase, and he, you could walk in there, something you could you smell. That, you love, you love the smell. Yeah. Everybody loves yeah. the smell of aniseed. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. But that's maybe that tracks what you yeah. said. But it's an interesting question for people to think on if, if they can see, you know, is that I've got any correlation to the, the immune system putting, having the aniseed all the time. Right, right. Yeah. Another question you was for what is the best. Thing you would recommend for wet canker or pigeons, the croaking. Right. See, all birds are croaking, right. you hear them. Yeah. And you come here. Yeah. And yeah, I've seen it, I've done it yeah. myself, putting yeah. things out of their throat, trying to get rid of it. And yeah. It doesn't do it, and it's monster, and then yeah. you, you do either kill it or yeah. if it's good enough, you'll not kill it, you'll yeah. persevere. Yeah. It's one of these things that's in the environment. If it's in one bird, it's in them all. But it's again, it's the stress, it's multiplying. Things multiply at different rates in different birds. And it's always going to be there. And every time you use some of these things that are out there to do it, you're wiping the whole thing out. But it's going to come back in. If that bird's prone to it, it's going to come back, it's going to come back, it's going to come back. What you're sitting with, you've got a couple of different remedies here, three, four old, which does your candida, your mycoplasma, your chronic respiratory disease. You've also got three, four, one, uh-huh. which is doing your E. coli, sorry, your coxy, trichomyiasis and candida, you know? What you're doing is you're you're looking to switch things on specifically, and get that and get that cover for three to six months. Right. That's the difference. You're not just wiping it out for it to come back in again, because it's still going to be in the environment. But if you can switch it on and stop that, <coughs> that's what it's about. The next thing was when older hens start laying small eggs, or only one small egg and then this one egg, is that a sign of them finishing? Or is, could you, if it's a really good, expensive stock hen, if, a, no, no yeah. expensive, a good stock hen, yeah. can you save it? Or? Oh, yeah, you can. When when you're looking at is eggs. Is it a How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> when, when you're looking at egg production, the, a hen can lay hundreds of eggs. It doesn't live long enough to lay hundreds of eggs, but it, will, it can lay potentially. It's like a bunch of grapes. All these little ovaries are like a bunch of grapes. And what happens, a, a yolk will mature, and then it'll fall down onto into the funnel, and then it'll come down, it'll get the first white around it, it'll get the second white around it, and then it gets the shell around it. Okay, and it's out. Now, when, when a hen lays smaller eggs, it's just because it's maybe not getting the right nutrients. As it gets older, 
it's not getting the right nutrients, the yolks aren't right properly. Right. So it's a smaller yolk, or you might even have a blood spot or a meat spot that will fall down into the funnel and it will trigger the same system. You know, quite often in the, in the commercial birds, you'll get small eggs and you break them open and it's a meat spot or it's a blood spot that's triggered the white. Triggered I've the seen, I've white seen that, and I've a bit of red in the yolk. Yeah, and nothing mm -hmm. else. Nothing else. Yeah. So again, you've got to look at the nutrition of the birds as they get older and you can switch birds on, cocks and hens, you can switch them on to breed doing different things, you know, and we'll have different things to, to do that. Right. How important is grit and vitamins to racing pigeons? Grit is important. Again, all birds, you know, they'll take grit on. One, as it's getting ground down, they're getting calcium, okay? But they don't have teeth. So it goes into the, the gizzard and the lining of the gizzard is like a strong, strong muscle. And that grit sits in there. It's not, the passage going through from the, the gizzard to the gut isn't big enough for the grit to go through, but it grinds the food down so that's small enough then to go through into the, the rest of the digestive system. So if a bird's lacking that, it will look for it. But the bird knows that. But it's not one thing you should take away and, and, and put there, take away, put there. To me, it should be there all the time. That's why I see they'll go for it every single day. Uh -huh. Whereas normal grit, you know, you've got your oyster shell grit, you've got flint grit, which is really hard and that takes a long time, you know. To have a wee bit combination, the birds will go for it. Same about vitamins and minerals. Have them there. Don't put them in the food. Have them there. And if they want it, they'll go for it. You know? right. But yeah, they're all needed. But not to the same extent as what people are using them. Right. You know? Less is more. Oh, less is more. What is the most important grains to feed? As in right. nutrition value. Nutrition value. Every grain has a, its nutritional value. Like I have said for years with the other birds, plain canary is a rubbish seed. You try spirit it, you're lucky to get 20% spirit. The nutrients just aren't there. Some of the places they're growing, they're so barren that the seeds grow and no more and that's it. So you look at things like wheat, barley, you know, beans, peas, they've all got their nutritional values. But what I would recommend is the seeds all have their nutritional value, but if you can soak a seed for two days, what you start is you start the germination process. And when the germination process starts, you don't want to sprout them. The sprouting's just gone too far. But if you soak a seed and you start the germination process, it changes the amino acids in it, you know, because it's starting to create life to, to produce itself. And it changes the composition. And not only are you getting better nutrients, but you're also getting moisture. More moisture as the birds are eating, you know. People say, oh, but you put wheat in and it starts to grow. Anything's got moulds in it if you let them do it. But... You know, if you do it for a couple of days, anything grows in the top, scrape it off, you know, give it a good rinse, not a problem. But that's, that's any, any, anything you use, if you sprout it, you're getting better nutrition. But don't go to the sprouting. But the, all these things have slightly different elements in them. A lot, a lot of pigeon men will no use wheat and barley. Right. Especially barley. Yeah. What would you say that with barley. I personally, I like barley. Barley's, barley's a, barley a, a wee bit different for wheat. You've got that sweet from it, you know, the, the mm. fact that you use it for whiskey, you know. Uh -huh. You know, you don't have to be Scotch to appreciate that. No. You know, but yeah, it's got a slightly different composition and some birds like different grains other than others, but it's not bad. It's not bad. It's got good nutrients in it. You know? right. It's preference, individual preference. Oh. Not individual bird preference, but it's people, you know, we play God to these birds, they stand or fall by what we do, you know, and we decide. If you were wanting to deal the perfect young one, right, and any kind of pigeon, yeah. what, would you, what would you use eggs. if you were feeding? Eggs. Eggs? Eggs. I've always said, and this is a fact, every single bird that lays an egg in the world, every single bird for, from a kiwi to a hummingbird to an ostrich, the chick that is produced is always bigger than the yolk. Sorry, the, 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 the yolk, yolk itself is a chip. has got the nutrition. You've got a few cells on a germinal disc. When it's fertilized, it multiplies, blood vessels go around, it absorbs the yolk, right? Mm -hmm. Now, 
if there's enough nutrients in that yolk to be, produce a chick from a few cells to day old, which is bigger than itself, you add the white to it. Now, the white has nothing to do with the development of the chick. All the white does is the outer white and the inner white is there to hold it in the center to stop it going to the side for bacteria to get it and also for gas exchange as it's developing. So you add the... I just can't get enough. <laughs> so you look at you look at what's in there, the, the, in the yolk, you can take it all that way. You add the essential and non-essential amino acids, which is protein, on the white to that. When a bird's hatched out, it goes. the, the birds go into survival mode. They don't, birds in the wild, they're not going for cranes, they're going for insects. Because the amino acids and insects into that bird, the growth rate is phenomenal. You know, and so when you look at feeding birds to feed parents, yeah, they'll grow on this. Again, going back to the growers, all plant-based amino acids, they'll grow. But if you want that bird to really grow, you put in the proper amino acids, which egg is phenomenal and it's cheap protein. So is that how the boys, the budgie boys feed egg food? Egg food. But the trouble with egg food is, the biggest majority is bakery byproducts with dried egg and colouring so and a few other things. It's a money. It's, it's a filler. Your birds will still grow but the vast majority of people when they realise they're leaving it. Whereas the people that go on to wheat which is whole fresh soaked for two days you're getting moisture into the birds plus it's bakery byproducts is basically weak. Why would you feed a filler that's processed that's not wanted as opposed to the whole thing? And wheat's a fraction of the price. Mm -hmm. And you add the, the, the egg into it You've got phenomenal nutrition. So would, the birds just fly. Would you boil it or would you raw? Put it well, into your feeding raw? There's different ways to do it. Boiled egg is grand because it's very easy absorbed. Uh -huh. Fry it the same. How would you Post, mix it through your feeding though? You can, you can mix it through or you can just chop it up. Chop it up. Yeah. Or scrambled egg even. You know. All these things are good nutrients. And the bird, do you think pigeons would eat that? Oh, they would. Yeah. Your birds will get used to something. But yeah, if you put put it down and they use it, yeah, no Mix problem. it through their actual yeah. feed, they'll eat it. But when birds start feeding young, it's survival <coughs> mode. They want them out there ASAP. That's why they change the diet. And yet you're feeding all year round and you feed the same diet. Oh. It's know. okay, I'm okay. <laughs> you right. know, we're feeding the same thing all year round. That's right. You need to get into Extra a season. Bring, birds, birds in the wild have seasons. They come in and out of cycle. Mm -hmm. We don't. We keep our birds the same all year round and we expect them to do fantastic, you know. How important is a, a time up to, well, we're through the, the yearly programme yep. for what we're going to yep. do. It. How important with the feeding, the feeding system is, would you put on the importance of amino acids in the feeding of young birds, as in producing young birds? But on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you... Amino acids are on everything. Right. Now, the problem is when people say, oh, I'm, I'm buying amino acids and put them in. They're not natural. They're not balanced. Foods have natural, whole balance. There are no fillers that are balanced. No fillers, yeah. No. And again, it's all about 80% of the immune system is the gut. And when you put things in that cause imbalances, you're upsetting the gut. Mm -hmm. Whereas when they're digesting, they're digesting everything, they're able to digest it, and there's a balance. You know, when you start putting weird and wonderful things in, you know, aye, aye. Yeah, you cause an imbalance, you know. But yeah, birds are switched on for breeding by uh, three main things the availability of food, their own body weight, and light. Now, if, two of the, if you've got two of these things, they'll still breed, but they won't breed as well. As the lights get night, uh, nights get lighter, the birds are switched on. That's why you can light. You can stimulate the birds anytime you want to, to lay by the light, but also the body weight. The bird has a fighting weight. Look at all the birds around the world. They all go through a lean spell. You know, they lose a bit of weight. They don't necessarily lose condition, but they lose a bit of weight because the, the, the availability of food is not there. They're slimming down a bit themselves, and all of a sudden the light increases. Insects, you know, availability of foods increases. They start eating more. Great, they put a bit of body weight on and then they barely have like food. There's enough food to feed our youngsters. Let's go. You know, so all these things switch the bird on. 
and we can do that. We can we can we can turn them on. Uh, Poultry will lay three hundred and sixty five days a year. They'll lay it. They'll lay a clutch and they'll stop. Uh, but you know we can switch these birds on as and when we want. We can even increase the size of them by a longer day length. You know the commercial bird. We can get them from laying large eggs to extra large eggs by saying right, give them six days a week. It takes twenty four and a half hours to lay an egg. So if you get them longer day length. It takes them longer to lay the egg, but it's bigger once they right. lay it. You know, so you, the birds are like lock machines. We can switch them on and off. Uh -huh. But if you're doing the same thing all year round, and you expect the birds to lay, and they'll get them the four seasons. No, four seasons. That's the secret. Right. Bring them in and out of cycle. Uh huh. What, in your opinion, Colin, is for the high losses? And racing pigeons. High losses in racing pigeons. Ninety percent of men will say it's hawks. Yeah. yeah. I go back to the one thing we talked about at the beginning. Stress. Right. Go back to the ten minutes. Uh -huh. Literally. Ten minutes being held under stress, everything multiplied. Now you imagine you've got a team of racers and you see a bird and I said, That bird's not right, I'm not gonna put that to the race today. I'm gonna keep it back because it's just sitting just no right. See that one bird? It's looking all right. Whatever's in that bird is in every other bird. Okay? Same problems as in that bird in every bird in your loft. Youngster, adult. You put these birds into a basket. What's it? Stress. What's going on? What's happening? You know, it's not just 10 minutes. It's a long time in that basket before they're released. Mm -hmm. Everything's multiplying. So what happens then is the bird's disoriented. You know, oh, I'm not feeling the greatest. I'm not that hungry. I'm not that hungry. What's going on? What's happening? Released. The bird's off. What's going on there, man? You're never going to see the bird again. It's gone. You know, that's the sad fact. It's, it's not hawks. Yeah, hawks take birds. But if that bird's disoriented, you're, you're never going to see it again. And personally, one of the reasons I've never kept birds is because if I put 20 birds away at a race and I lost five, they would never get out of my shed again. I'm not going to lose five birds. I've looked after them, I've spent time with them. I'm not going to do that. How you guys manage it year after year to lose silly amounts of birds is beyond me. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's what it is. Simple stress. You know, we've got a product there, 302 plus. The guys on that, it relaxes the birds and it picks them up. And so when they go in there, they're not stressed out. So when the basket's open, they're coming home. They're not disoriented, no. they're coming home. And what people are saying is, all the birds are coming back together. Normally you'll see two or three come in and a few more, a few more. The fact they're all coming back together, it's fantastic, you know? And that's been across the board, you know? They're just coming yeah, in. Coming home and stuff. How can you check fertility in older birds, as in stock birds? Right. If you've got a really good pigeon, yeah. you think it's, yeah. how can you, how could you check that? If I was buying any bird, I would always, if I was buying a cock bird, I always check it for fertility. There's nothing worse than buying a cock that's not going to produce. You right. know? And as birds get older, they, they can start failing a bit. You know, again, nutrition-wise has an effect, all these things. But you can turn birds on to produce, you know. You've got your... We don't. <laughs> you, can, you can turn your birds on by a number of things. Hemp, we're talking about the availability of food. Uh -huh. We're talking about putting body weight on. Hemp is a phenomenal nutrient. It's got a lot of essential and non-essential amino acids, but it's very easy absorbed. A week before you want to breed, start feeding some hemp. The birds will get stimulated for that, you know, uh -huh. and it, they'll also increase a bit of body weight. And, and that's a good thing. You can check your bird, you can check, if a hen lays an egg, it can be fertilized. Unless it's small eggs that are just aren't got it. You've got to get the nutrition into the hen so it's all in the yolk as that ripens. There's no point in starting to feed a couple of days before they're gonna start laying because the yolks are already there, you know, mm -hmm. being prepared and getting bigger and then dropping down. So you've got to get the nutrients in the bird so it's in the yolk. If an egg doesn't hatch, if it, there's a number of reasons why eggs don't hatch. For the first 10 days, if an egg doesn't develop to 10 days, it's usually because it's lacking a vitamin, a mineral, a nutrient, a trace element, manganese, zinc, magnesium. If these things are lacking, 
the embryo switches off. Right. And you'll see it. 10 days, it doesn't go past it. If it reaches maturity, it could be a weak chick. You know, if you put liquid calcium in, you've put too much calcium in the birds. One, you can make your cock bird sterile with liquid calcium. It just locks the system up. Right. There's a patient of calcium. You know? right. And then with hens, when it comes down with the white on it after the yolk, mm-hmm. the white, and the shell gland, if there's too much, a hen will take every ounce of calcium out of its bones to put a shell around an egg before it doesn't produce. So when you put extra calcium in, it'll discrete, it'll excrete it out, but in the shell gland, it'll put too much of a shell on making a harder shell. And so by the time that chick tries to pip out, it's exhausted. And if it's a weak chick, you've yeah. lost it. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, you don't want to, say there's pr- plenty of nutrition you can give a bird to put calcium on without having to give it calcium. Birds in the wild have never sort of, again, so there with that, it doesn't say, and you know the birds are going to breed and start laying eggs because they're looking for calcium. They don't, because they're getting it from what they get, you know. All their insects and all the, 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 the leaves and everything else, you know, they're getting it. They don't need it. You know, we've been conditioned to buy this and buy that. And See when you're talking about the turning them on, I yeah. was always, I get friend, I mean, the, the cocks are more important. She likes to turn the lights on. Right. He would turn the lights on the cocks about 10 to 15 days before he was going to pair up. The lighting's important. But for can, the hens. Yeah, but lighting's important. But they all, they're all stimulated the same way, mm-hmm. you know. Why should a cock bird in the wild be different from the wild? You know, they don't go, you know, birds migrate. They migrate for a reason, you know, for food and all the rest. But when it comes to breeding time, the cocks don't go away no, to no, Ibiza no, and get the right. sun and no. they come back, you know. That's true. Yeah. Eh? Well, some of them do, but it's in a hen party, aye, aye, aye. stag these, but, you know, they don't. It's nothing different. It's just... So they just put the light on for the two of them? The light for the two. But what you find is, if you go past 14 hours late, I get phone calls regular from people with all types of birds. Uh-huh. Fertility is bad. There's two questions I ask. Are you using liquid calcium? And quite often, I heard you know that. You're using it to let I. You've made your cup wear style. The hens will still lay, but you know, you'll have issues probably with the mm-hmm. hard shells. Or if they're not using calcium and that's the reason, how many hours of light you got them on? If it's past 14 hours of light, you're overstimulating the bird. The pituitary glands working over time. Your cocks will come in and out of cycle. And then your hens will come in and out of cycle as well. You know, they'll sit, they'll come off the eggs. They'll, they'll feed youngsters, they'll not feed youngsters because they've been overstimulated. You've got to bring them in and out of cycle. You know, people say, oh, but the summertime you've got, you know, up here in Scotland, there's loads of hours of light, you know, it's more than 14. Birds are stimulated by the determined night and day. It's a natural light. By 100 lux. Right. So if you had 150 lux here uh-huh. and you turned it down to 49 lux, a bird would signal that as darkness. And it takes the longest period of darkness is night. So you could have your bird lights coming on and off and on and off for more than 14 hours, but you're not overstimulating them for 14 hours. But when you've got constant 14 hours light, the birds are overstimulated. So that's what the, the boys with the darkness system. I do darkness system myself. Yeah. But I can get in my loft and I can I can walk about. The birds can see the drink yeah. and everything. They're yeah. doing stuff and drinking. Yeah. But it's dark than where it is outside. Yeah. They're not being stimulated. Yeah, I've been to, I've been to a few lofts that you can you can't even see two feet yeah. in front of yourself. Yeah. It's pitch yeah. black. That it's is, no use because the bird's going to get a drink. That is stress. Mm-hmm. That is stress. See, we were, we were talking earlier before we started here about molten birds out and that. Mm-hmm. I've put 200,000 commercial layers into molt, and you start by giving them a shock to the system. And the first one is no food, no light, no war, total darkness for a whole day. And the bird's like, what's happening? What's happening? And then you give them a little bit of light, some water, a little bit of food. But you've shocked the system, and the, the bird says, I need to live. I can't even tame these feathers. And it drops every feather. And then you build it up and you start bringing the feathers back in, you know. But yeah, light's, light's important. Mm-hmm. This is maybe a bit of a controversial one, but is there a product out there that could be made up to protect our birds from predators? Um, you're always going to have birds of prey. People get prosecuted every year because they put out poisonous prey for the birds to take. There's not a product out there that isn't illegal to use, you know. Mm-hmm. Sadly, we're going to have to live with it, but, uh, see, 
It's not. It's not. I've asked the question. There's, that's there's, on there's, it. there's loads of things out there, but I say that they're not legal. No, not legal. The the, la- the last question I've got here is, for birds to digest calcium, what's the best and quickest way, and why? Yeah, there's a lot of boys been on about the osteocare. See the yeah. the tab. Yeah. Good for old for humans. Good for old women. It's good for old women. Birds are designed that they'll take the nutrients that they get. Mm-hmm. Spinach is phenomenal. Phenomenal nutrient. You know, people don't feed enough greens to their birds. It, it doesn't have to all be, you know, when you put just nothing but grain <coughs> in, you can cause a deficiency. The birds in the wild don't just eat one thing. They'll go for lots of things. You want to put calcium in. You've got broccoli, you've got spinach, you've got different things that are calcium rich. Mm-hmm. And the bird will take it. And I say, birds need calcium for every day, but you give them the right nutrition. Moderation. They'll get it. And you don't need to buy all these products that are specifically calcium. Again, you can cause an imbalance. Yeah? Right. Well, that's the kind of questions that I've got in for you, Colin, that right. buy it. It's kind of sealed a bit of it. But what we're going to do now is going to, I want you to go through, we'll start for September. Right. Right? Well, September to September, say. Right. A yearly program for racing right. pigeons. Okay, I'll lead you through it and then you tell us right. where your products, yeah. what could tell the pigeon fancier yeah. to try and get. Well, you've we've seen the results of some of the things are phenomenal. Yeah. Irish boys, English boys, Scottish boys, Australia. Is, is, is that right? All, All over. Cuba. They're, they're, yeah. Right? Yeah. And the, the, the results are phenomenal. The feedback you're getting is out of this world. So at yeah. least. You're not here to, to rob him, but I can that, because I can you too well. You're trying to make the sport better. Yeah. And what you've done, I've seen you on the boot here, so they're getting free products out to guys, and away with a bird. I'm not going to mention, because it's not up to yeah. me to mention people's names, but you're away, you come down here to your so you know, a man's bird up, you get something made up for him. Yeah. You can tell him yourself about it, about yeah. what you're going to do. Yeah. But I might, I might go through from September to September, and I'll, I'll pick you through in a couple of steps what we do yeah. in the race, because I, I know you know. Yeah. Focus what we do it. Yeah. In September, really, at the end of September, the birds are going into the moat. Right. So we're wanting them into the moat. And we want to try and do it as, as best and easy away for the bird and as natural. I know yeah. with the darkness it's no natural. I know yeah. it's not. But we want to try and do after the darkness is by our races by that's the most yeah. important bit for us. Yeah. We're trying to go for getting the birds through as safe, as quick, yeah. and as less stress living as we yeah. can get in that bird. So cause to me, this is just to me, that's the most important time of the year is the molten period because yeah. that's when your races is one, I would think, yeah. as a molt because that's you making your, yeah. your feathers for, for racing for the next year. Yeah. So what products would you use for the molten? And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what I used to do, right? In the end of September, because I never checked the feathers like right. I used to do 10 to 14 days bait roll, right. clean everything out. Oh, right, okay. I know you'll laugh, but yeah. this is what I know. I know the top men done it, and, I, and I've, I've, I've got some good friends, top men, they all do it. Yeah, 10 to 14 days, days, betro, hit them hard, and then it's prone prebiotics, yeah. two or three days. Yeah, and then we start building them up, good food, and that, yeah. and clean them out. And then we'll inject them for the paratyphoid or paramix because yeah. I jag my pigeons for paramix for four yeah. times a year maybe a waste of time I don't know yeah. but this is what I used to do so we do them for paramix of virus paratyphoid I do yeah. them for that as well mm. so I'd not I made sure everything was clean if you know what I mean yeah. in my head yeah. and what I was getting learnt and everything yeah. so this is what a lot of good men and yeah. every pigeon man no good or bad yeah. every 90% of pigeon men do it yeah. So we use the antibiotic there, right? Yeah. That's in the end of September, October. Yeah. What would you do in those months with the moat going through yeah. to get them cleaned out? And this is us ready because a lot of boys start breeding in December. Yeah. Yeah. So we want these pigeons clean, yeah. perfect, nothing in them, yeah. ready to go to egg the hens yeah. 10th of December onwards. Mm. What would yeah. you do? First thing, I've never ever understood why people would spend good money to wipe a bird's immune system out, good and bad. I've just right. never ever understood that. And then you spend good money, bring it back up again. 
Mm. You never bring it back up again to what it was. You've not lowered the immune system. You've not taken it out of the environment for them to pick up again. They're picking these things up again. So why you've never known a builder to build a house and think, I'll tell you what, I'm going to knock that down again. And I'm going to build it again. And I'm going to knock it down and build it again. Somebody has to live in that house. You can't keep on knocking it down, you know. That time of year, look at three years come November, I started asking, I've got the who's who bird keepers use my stuff. Say so a lot of prison boys I've dealt with, it's all top secret, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't give the names out. If they want no, to say no. that's grand, but you know. And I, I started asking people, what's How's your results been? You, some of them have been with me 10, 15 years, 18 years, you know. I've had a lot of people that have died in me, you know, because they're older guys, you know. And I, unfortunately, that, that's what happens when we get to that certain age. But a lot of guys were with me a long time. And there was 15 guys stood at a mile. And it blew me away. And I wish I'd asked the same questions five years before because we got the same answers. They were breeding with birds that people would breed for four, five, six years. They were breeding with them eight, nine, ten plus years for the type of bird. And this was pigeon boys, budgie boys, finch boys, British boys, canaries, over the, the whole spectrum of birds. Mm -hmm. And what they were doing, it blew me away. And I stopped selling some of the products because of it. Because I thought, they're not needed. You know, I've been approached over the years by so many people, try this product, try that product, you've got a customer base, you, and it causes an imbalance, it causes something that focuses on one thing. It's got to be balanced. That's why I've got <coughs> so few products, but they do a specific job. Now these guys, what they did was, they put the birds through four seasons. And they fed four different seasons. It wasn't always the same all the way through, the same lighting all the way through. They brought their birds in and out of cycle. Now, you want your birds healthy all year round, it's a given. But you want to stimulate them, you want to relax them, you want to get them through the mold. Mm -hmm. And that's why you feed them. And again, look at the wild birds, what they're eating. They'll eat periods there where there's grain, you know. And then there's periods when they're breeding with insects and all the rest. They change their diet. And sometimes it's just the availability of what they can get. But you bring them in and out of cycle. <coughs> right. And you want the nutrition there. The end of the year is the harvest time. Your birds have already bred. They're not. They're molting. They're not molting when they're rearing. They molt at the end. The youngsters are molting at the end. They've got the nutrition with the grains and all the rest, and they're still insects. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the year, so they get a combination of a lot of things. You want to feed your birds <coughs> according to the season. You feed your birds a high diet all the time, and they're fat. They're not getting that lean spell. They're, so when it comes to breeding, you might stimulate them the light. You might stimulate them, with, stimulate them with the availability of food, but they're overweight. And especially hens, they carry the weight at the back end, you know, around about the vent. That's where they carry the weight. So they don't lay as well. You know, you bring them in and out, get them keen. So you've got a fighting do, weight, you would do bring them food. into the fighting weight. No way. You, so you don't, there's no reason to clean them out. No, no reason no, to do no, nothing. No. The, the immune system is the same <coughs> all year round. Right. You know, we don't say to ourselves, right, it's winter time. We, we need to boost our immune system. We need this summertime, we need to boost our immune system. No, it's the same all year round. Right. So why are you going to clean something out before something happens? It's the same, it's consistency. The gut flow and fauna, every time you put something in, it affects the waste of money. They're only active in the gut with one application for three or four hours, and you're looking at a pinhead, that's all you're doing. But you're upsetting the gut flow and fauna. You're trying to introduce something that's maybe not in the world. It has to deal with that right. and process it, you know. Let it control itself. Don't wipe it out with things. Let it control itself. Fresh water all year round. Fresh, whole, natural foods. They're complete. I used to sell Maximin, which was herbal. So people say, oh, it's all natural. Poison is natural, but you wouldn't give it to the birds, you know. Uh -huh. Natural doesn't always mean it's great because it causes an imbalance, it causes upset. There's different things like turmeric and, you know, there's cinnamon. ginger or cinnamon. They're all good things, but balanced, you know. Oh, I put garlic in the water. Guess what? You'll never see a, a vampire in your place, but it's not doing that much for the birds. It's a thing I never use. I hate it. You know, it will stop the birds from drinking water. It will stop drinking, which causes them stress. But people make their minds up on two things, facts and opinions. 
99% of what people think is other people's opinions. People are quite happy to tell you what they do. Mm-hmm. They don't tell you how successful they are. You know, mm-hmm. People have accepted poor to average results and that's it. We wonder why people are dropping off and not keeping birds. Because they're losing so many birds and they're not performing so well, they're not producing so well. You know, we want to keep people in the hobby. Right. You know, keep it simple, keep it fresh, keep it natural. You know, so simple through, as well. We've got them through the mall. Right. For amino acids. The end of October. So Over. once once we've got them not the end of October, the end of November, once yeah. we've got them dropping their flights every ten days. Yeah. We've got them through, see we're thinking about the beginning of December, for some of the boys, not about the, yeah. I want to start pairing up yeah. about the 10th of December. Yeah. So they would get the lights on, yeah. get them turned on, yeah. get everything sorted out, the feeding would get a wee bit better. Yeah. What would you do for then? To, get them to, to turn them on, you, what you're looking to do is 15 hours, sorry, the maximum you want to go to to start with is 12 hours. So, count back to when you want your first eggs, with first week in January, third week in January, count back for there and turn them on so it's 15 minutes up, right, up to when you want to turn them on to 12 hours. That's plenty. You're stimulating the birds, they've seen the light coming on, start increasing the food a bit, but increase it with good nutrients like I always say every bird, if you can put hemp into them, it starts to stimulate a bird. Just a week. A week so before you, you want them to would go. Would you put 15 minutes a day or a... 15 minutes a week. A week? Yeah. Edge. Every week, 15 minutes. So count back. So you're saying the first week in January, count back 15 minutes a week to when what light they've got, whether it's eight hours. Uh-huh. Start 15 minutes. So 12 hours the first week. You're going to start increasing the food. You know, again, things like egg spinach, amino acids that are easy to absorb, the bird's going to say, oh, there's availability of food. They're going to start to increase the body weight. You know, hemp is going to stimulate, it's, it's very easy to absorb. Mm-hmm. You know, it stimulates them and say, oh, there's availability of food for my youngsters. And they're putting the body weight on. You've got the lighting, you've got the availability of food, you've got the weight. Bang. So going through the, the sitting eggs, <coughs> what would you do then? We usually treat it Again, antibiotics. We treat it for cancer when they're sitting in eggs. Right. Say about 10 days. Right. Well, well I do it. Yeah. Treat for cancer. Yeah. 10 days and everything's... Yeah. But the snag with that is if you're putting it in the water, give it some days, some buds are 10 days, some pigeons are ready for chipping, some yeah. days are decent. Yeah. And, and every day it's got days, every day it tells you all my pigeons are sitting in 10 day eggs. Yeah. It doesn't happen. No, no. So, what would you... Again, what the birds, uh, stre- breeding's a stressful thing. Uh-huh. You know, you've got hormones running wild and all the rest, you know, and mating and all the rest. Would you use your products at this time? All year round. Oh, yeah, right. All so year we'll round. go through that once we've, I've yeah. done the season with yeah. you, right? No bother. You, you've got an immune system there that needs to be the same all year round. Right. It's in the same environment. We play God to these birds. They stand or fall by what we do. We can switch them on, we can turn them off, we can do anything to them, mm-hmm. you know. The stand or fall by what we do. Simple as that. The birds in the wild, I don't know how they manage to survive with this, honestly. <laughs> you know. But no, it's it's all about keeping it the same. So we've got the birds, we've got the chicks hatching. Yep. You're wanting amino acids. Yep. Try and feed the yep. eggs. Yep. So what you're saying is the best of feeding into them yep. to the end. We so for two days you start the germination process. A lot bit grated carrot, you know. It's not um, just for budgies, all birds, you know. Spinach. You get the carrot, spinach. Spinach, you know, eggs, fantastic. Lettuce, what do you think of lettuce? I used to give it years ago. Lettuce is more no. just, it's not got the same nutrients. No. Yeah. yeah. So you're looking for spinach and carrots. Spinach, broccoli, carrots. vegetables, yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. But again, you eat it. the birds in the wild don't feed the birds great, their, their chicks grain. No. They're feeding insects. Insects. People say, oh, it's up in protein, but it's amino acids. Go back to the egg, the yolk is complete from zero to day old, how much better is that including the white going to take it from day old to leave the mm-hmm. nest, mm-hmm. you know? Definitely. So the, the young ones, about 15 days to 17 days, yeah. I would inject for paramyxovirus then, personally, Ouch. Ouch. right? Yeah. I've always, I, I stopped doing it, but I, this, I'm just saying that a lot of pigeon men do it, yeah. 
15 to 17 days. Yeah. Then three weeks later, I'd do it again. See, you're putting the bird under stress. But e- we do even, it. even in the poultry industry, that birds are going to be laying a life cycle of 72 weeks laying. You know, they'll come in and get transferred at 16 weeks of age into the lane sheds, you know, free range, whatever. They'll only vaccinate them once. Right. You know, and some of the vaccines they're really looking to get away from because the birds are wiped out for two weeks. You're putting something foreign into the bird at that young age. Say, you give an antibiotic to a chick, you can kill it. Quite often they'll say, don't don't give the chicks. Right. If it's doing that to the chick, what's it doing to the adult? But you're putting a vaccine in which is a foreign body, you're trying to create a reaction in the bird. It's not always a good reaction. Right. You know? You're putting something in there that's going to affect that bird and can pop out any time under so stress. So what would you say, because we've got to vaccinate, it's a must, it's law. But that's before you fly the bird. Uh-huh. Leave it to the last minute. Leave it to the last minute. Leave it to the last minute. So it you're, you're done by law. And how, would you say once a year's enough? Aye. Aye. We're fortunate we've got 350, uh-huh. Paramex or Paratyphoid. We're not giving it something foreign to cause a reaction. We're going to the source and switching it on. So if it comes across it, it's switched on. It's not going to affect. And again, you're getting three to six months. Uh-huh. Come so, on. So see the when you're doing for Paramex of virus, do you think this should be done with all birds? As in, it's law, it's a money-making, it's, it's it's a money-making thing, obviously. Right? It's got to be done. Personally, no. No. It shouldn't no. be. Personally, I know a lot of guys that don't need to show race or that, you know. Uh-huh. They don't do it. Right. And they don't have birds go down with it. Sometimes they do, but they say, we're fortunate we've got something there natural right. to switch on. To switch on. Yeah. But no, I think in this day and age, it's, it's shocking that it's requirement law. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm dealing with big commercial farmers now, and they're rethinking what they're putting into the birds. Because we're dealing with various things, and they're more than happy. Because yeah. there's so many, there's a, the Columba vac- vaccine that was made in Poland, that, but yeah. got very hard to get. And then we get the Nobel vac- vaccine. No. Yeah. Now we've got different types of vaccines. Yeah. We've got vaccines yeah. for paramex of virus, yeah. herpes, young I, birds. I, I am and, beyond belief that people are vaccinating for herpes. Right. Really. When you've got a product there, again, I'm not making medical claims, but, you know, people are happy. Uh-huh. You know, and when they've got a condition and they see, see what happens, you know, they're more than happy. Aye, right, aye. Right. So we've come away for <laughs> we'll get the chicks out of the nest. Right. And then, say, they're going darkness system 1st of March. Yeah. So they get, they get down for... They give it eight, nine hours, daylight a day, right. 24 hours. There right. is darkness. Yep. Right, so what would you, what would you do to combat stress in that situation? 302 plus. 302 plus. Just to put in the picture. What would be the best time, and no, no big yep. story, but what would you say would be the ideal light for those pigeons? Daylight. We need to keep, remember, we've got to keep the feathers. Eight hours. Eight hours. Eight hours, yeah. a daylight, no yeah. more. No, that's all right. Yeah. That's yeah. fine, that. that's what we use. Birds, for. it's like us. We grow when we're sleeping, mm-hmm. you know. Like, I used to be into the bodybuilding, I'm okay now, but it was the rest period that built. It wasn't an exercise period, you know. And sometimes people are over-exercise their birds right. and stress them out, you know. Get them short flights, yeah, get them exercising but to build the bird up it's the rest period that's doing it it's not the it. flying right right so we've got the young birds in the darkness yeah and we've got the old birds kind of recuperating for rearing right we, that, we, we'd start <laughs> doing the same again 10 days antibiotics yeah. to get them cleaned out after rearing young yeah. ones and build them up again Let's let's just wipe the whole immune system. Uh, out. Again, that's yeah. twice in a year. Yeah, yeah. that's the old way I yeah. used to, we used yeah. to do it. Money to do, money to kill it, and money to try build it up. Yeah, and so they're set spending money in good food. Yeah, yeah, you are beating everything. Nutrition is everything. When you see folk that aren't well, personally, and then we bad get, diet, bad health. We we'll get the birds back up. We we'll start training. The losses start. Yeah, etc. etc. Yeah. Stress. And then we we'll get into the racing. Then they come home. They go to get them up to the race. And then they come yep. home the first week. Then you you'd warm them. Yeah. You canker them. Yeah. Wiping everything out again. And then you 
doing for bacteria, yep. respiratory, yep. Lancaster, all, that, all the different yep. things, Lancaster, like and dark cycling. You'd be doing it yep. every third week or so. Yep. You'd doing them one week, it's, one, it's one a, week, it's a one week high. for. It's a false high. Right. I've got people of all types of birds, when they buy off people who are on that system, when they get them back home and don't keep them on the same system, they're good, for, them. good for enough. Right. If they don't die, then they don't get any from them. So that, that's a year they go through, and then once they buy, they're back to the moat again. Yeah. So could you take us through, going through September, yeah. to September, what you would use with your products, if you could show us? Yeah. yeah and no show problem. us, Colin, what, how to mix and that, because yeah. the guys are phoning me and I'm trying... Yeah. They're just seen these wee bottles, no. and I, I, I was the exact same. Yeah. I've seen yeah. that wee bottle, and how's that going to do me 15 yeah. months? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Two mole, how? Yeah. And they can't even have some, when you're adding that two mole to a litre, it's yeah. multiplying itself. Yeah. It could do 50,000 litre, but yeah. they just kind of get it through their head that that no, exactly. two mole. Exactly, yeah. So if we go through it step by step yeah. and explain here yeah. on how we do it. As I've said to many people, I've been doing this for over 20 years, mm -hmm. and people still speak to me without swearing. So it's no <laughs> bad sign. Right. No bad sign. But my focus on everything I do is taking stress off the birds. Right. Uh, one word stress. Health, environment, nutrition. Uh, if you do that, you have no issues. Mm -hmm. None at all. This is why I've got... Now, I've neglected my own industry, the poultry industry, for the last 18 years. I've dealt with a lot of small poultry people, people now with pure breeds and everything, but the industry now is realising what it's doing and antibiotics isn't working. You know, they're still getting issues with them. So I'm there getting them coming to me and when you've got the three biggest producers in the country turning around and wanting to put every single bird on some of your products, it's quite scary. But actually, not just going about the antibiotic, we're making a weaker pigeon. Uh, it's yeah, no, yeah. It's not able yeah. to taste it. It's not doing the things it used to be. No, I remember exactly. going into men's lofts in the 80s. The Malcolm brothers were phenomenal. Yeah. But they were the miserablest guys I've ever seen right. in my life. Yeah. And they fed badly, wheat, mm. and the flu nurse are fed, and they were yeah. timing for fun. Yeah. All old birds, they would have won everything. Yeah. They were too miserable to feed the young birds the same. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they were great guys, but they're shrewd. Yeah. And as you said, they never used antibiotics in like yeah. that. They were just into whole fresh food. Whole fit cheap, <laughs> good yeah. Yeah. food. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And as much as they could feed in their hard trainers yeah. and as you, you could, say you can feed good all, food we never heard all these, of the price. We never heard all these antibiotics yeah, then. Exactly. You can, they, feed, you can feed them for a fraction of the price. Yeah. They were saying 20 and getting 20 for France and everything yeah. like that. So, yeah. Aye, there's, there's yeah. method in it, that's yeah. what you're saying. So what, what you're looking at is, say, environment-wise, we play God to these birds. Birds in a while have got a brand new environment every two minutes. The wind blows, it rains, they fly to another perch. Ours are stuck in the loft. Mm -hmm. You've got people saying, oh, I use a deep letter system. I'd use this, I'd use that. Cleanliness you can't beat, you know? It's not about building the immune system up. The bacteria is already there, the bird's already got an immune system, and you're wiping it out. And it's still in this environment, all these things, and you're expecting it to, to stay good and healthy, you know? And you wonder why birds come down, you know? So what, what you want to do environment-wise, you want to keep it clean. Now, to give it a new environment every day, we've got the clean and clear checkmate, right? I've seen so many different products over the years. Vercon S, the last farm that Vercon S came to for a trial was my farm, 150,000 broilers. I took it straight out of the shed. Fantastic product, oh, amazing product. I went to the company and wanted to promote it. Cajun every bird's falcon in zoos. Yeah, no problem, go ahead, call. Great stuff. People phone you up, this is fantastic stuff. It's taking the chrome off my sink. Wow, it's corrosive. A friend of mine up north, Aberdeenshire, Colin, just to let you know, I've burnt the piglet's feet. Put it down, I forgot to hose it off. It's his fault. Corrosive, you know. Piglets came fine, but it was a wee bit stressing them. I stood back from that. When you put that in the water, what's it doing to all the bacteria? You know? Strip them out. Strip them out. Oh, for goodness. The birds, are still, the birds are resilient, but you put them under stress, you're not going to get the best out of them. It's a bit of bleach and all that. Yeah. So when this came along, it blew me away because it's food safe. <coughs> There's three different ways people use it. If you had a mite infestation or fleas or tick or, or lice. Oh, that was one of the questions I missed that, but the... The, the feather mite, yeah. Feather rot. Feather, feather mite, rot, all these uh -huh. things, if it's, if it's mite or if it's fungal, 100 mils per litre kills on contact, mites and eggs that go dark green. If 
you miss a bit, they'll come back. It's not residual, but it can break the cycle. Uh -huh. But it's a constant battle because there's always things coming in, you know, uh -huh. from the from the environment. Not, but for mites, it's fantastic. <coughs> for cleaning, it's phenomenal. Twenty mils per litre, spray it on, wipe it on the surface, leave it twenty minutes. The ground and dirt lifts. I've got the Isle of Wheel boys that spray it on and it comes out all the little pits. They don't have to sandblast it, you know. And you don't have to hose it; just just hose it, not mm, uh, blast it. You know, spray it on. I always say, go away and cut, get a cup of tea. Come back twenty minutes later, and all the ground and dirt just wipe off. People with chest problems and asthma. We, I've got asthma. We get an, an, an environment. You know, we only get one set of lungs. Uh -huh. I say that and I do that in talks, but I say. My oldest son had a double lung transplant just over a year ago, so technically we can't get a second uh, set, but we don't want to go down no, that road. So the bottom line is, 10 mils per litre, walking backwards is a mystery. Doesn't matter if it's, it hits the birds, the feed, the water, it's bringing the dust down, and at 10 mils per litre, it's bringing the virus and bacteria levels down as well. And people with chest problems and asthma and COPD, instead of going in with masks and after 20 minutes being <sighs> wheezy and tight chested, they've been there for hours. I've had grown men phone me up in tears, calling, I'm still keeping the birds, I can't thank you enough because I'm in there for hours. I've got a woman from Yorkshire phone me up a few years back. First thing she said, I've lost my husband. Excuse me? Yeah, he's been using that clean and clear check my ears, and I'm thinking, what's he done? She says, he used to go in the shed for 20 minutes with his canaries, and he, he would, that would be him for the whole day, 20 minutes, half an hour, and he would be recovering, you know? He's in there for hours. <laughs> and I'm thinking, You've not lost your husband, I think you've saved your marriage. Uh, the boy's happy again. The boy's you know? happy. Yeah. So it's a phenomenal safe product to use for cleaning for everything. Just don't give it to the missus indoors because if she tries it, you'll not get back in it. Yeah. It really is a super product, you know. But it's food safe. The only place you don't spray it is on eggs, because it'll take the cuticle off the eggs, which opens the pores up the for back bacteria eat. to get in. So that's for the environment. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it does the job. The next area, nutrition. You know, we're talking about the bird stripping the nutrients out. The top S, there's loads of pre and probiotics. They're just... You are saying pre and probiotics are no probiotics use. The there's some good ones out there probably. But what's what's nice. the difference with this? This isn't a pre probiotic. It's a dead yeast plus a couple of enzymes. Now, a good few years ago, a good friend of mine, he's in his 90s now, a bit of a recluse, keeps all sorts of birds. Phenomenal collection. Phoned me up and says, Colin, I've taken every pre and probiotic on the market, sent it across to Switzerland for testing. I says, right, how did mine get on? He says, they had to test yours twice. He says, don't worry, I didn't pay for it getting tested twice, but they had to test yours twice. Every pre and probiotic at the time on the market was active in the gut with one application for three to four hours, and then it resorted back to its normal flora and fauna. He says, yours was active in the gut for seven to eight hours with one application. He said it was so far ahead of the rest of them, they checked it twice, just to make sure it wasn't a mistake they made. We're not trying to put anything into the bird. They say the bird's got a balance of good and bad. Every gut, yours and mine, every animal's got a gut balance, good and bad. But when the balance is upset, that's when we get diarrhea. You know, we eat something mm. weird and wonderful, that's what I get. That's when we get diarrhea, sore stomachs and all this, you know. That's your immune system you're dealing with. So with this, sprinkle light pepper, Again, to get to the stick, people are using pepper shakers now, and to get it to stick, they're using water, lemon juice, or maybe coating it with oils. I even know somebody that uses raw eggs. Brilliant. Me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, raw eggs on it, yeah, yeah it's sticky, you know, right. fantastic. But what it's doing is, I like dust and like pepper, you can't overdose, but every animal bird that touches sets the gut up so billions of its own good bacteria mm. multiply. So you're getting an imbalance, but in a good way. So all the nutrients are stripped. So dogs on this, they're getting more pups. And when the pups are born, and this is being given on the food to the, the bitch, unbelievable, they don't know which ones to run. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the dogs are... And the birds are harder to run. Oh, the birds as well. Because all the nutrients are being stripped, and again, go back to the survival mode, birds change their diet to get proper nutrients to get them out. The growth rate of a chick it's phenomenal in a short space of time because mm -hmm. they want them out of the nest so it doesn't get eaten by a predator. So with this setting the gut up, all the nutrients are stripped out. So the droppings go lighter, drier, a bit less, no smell, your nests are cleaner, your your chicks develop quicker, you know? 
And you're not going to make a five fancy little canary into a big canary, but it's going to get to where it's going to go quicker. That's the difference. And what you find is that the, the birds, you have to ring them a whole variety of birds two days early, or else you're not going to ring them all. I've got a thing on here, all creatures help check. Takes no responsibility for unwrung birds due to accelerated growth rate. Every year I get people with British birds, not so much canaries, British birds four and up saying, Colin, I couldn't get rings on my birds. You read the label. Aye, but I didn't believe it. The last thing you want is to have unwrung birds in your area mm, of British yeah, birds. Yeah. You know, people think you'd be catching them for the wild, you know. That's right. But they'll leave the nest three to five days early, far better feathered. And they fly through the mall. Because you're getting all the nutrients stripped, you'll find the birds are eating less as well. Oh, they definitely eat less. You know, and that's what you want. It's not filler. There's not nutrients going through them because they're not digesting it. See, see these going into that corn, right? I don't know flats under the best thing for pigeons, right? Right. But I would, I would done a wee experiment myself with like, the olive oil. No, right. no olive oil. No. We we'll get linseed oil as right. well, rapeseed oil. Right, right. yeah. To mix that into the seeds. Right. What do you think the benefit of using the oils is, or no benefit? What do you think? Again, you think? it's everything in moderation. You know, it's like... Would you use oils twice a week or once a week? Or what, would you, what would you recommend? Because you want to plug up the system. Every time, every time you put something foreign in the, the body, the gut is affected, up or down, and that's your immune system. You know, it's stress. So every time you put something in, that isn't natural, you know. The bird will get used to a lot of things, mm -hmm. but you want to have everything in moderation. Some of these oils are beneficial, you know, and they'll do no harm whatsoever, and the birds will digest it, you know. And sometimes, if there's nutrients in it, the birds will take that on board. But you just don't want to go overboard, you know. You've got your coconut oils, you've got your your rapeseed oils, you know, your, your cod liver oil, all these different things people have used over the years. They do not farm, the bird will still be I'm not really a cod liver oil fan, yeah. to tell you the truth. Oh, it tastes horrible. I, I just think it's, yeah. it's quite a dangerous oil to use. Yeah, use you, the right way. yeah, exactly, exactly. But see, birds in the wild survive without it. Without it, that's right. Yeah. And they breed over, you know. So I don't, that's I don't use it. No, no, there's a lot of things we use because other people told us and other people used it. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's beneficial. No. The amount of people I know that have gone off these things and they haven't seen what's the difference to birds. The person don't all of a sudden die. Could you damp it with spray of water? Water, lemon juice. Would People lemon juice kill it? No. No, 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 no. lemon juice won't kill it. No. Well, lemon juice is an interesting one because well, the body got pH. Uh -huh. Lemon juice is acidic. And people talk, oh, you want to lower the, the pH down. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. Let the bird with natural water control its own pH. Why do you want to lower it down? Because someone told you to. It has its own pH. And that's the way it is. And every time you put something in lower down, you're not doing the bird immune system any better. Yeah. Keep it on water. But when you use lemon juice, even though it's acidic, it turns the body alkaline. And so alkaline's not a bad thing. But you don't want to weigh you know, high alkaline, but it's just on the higher side of neutral. And that's not a bad thing, because organisms, and especially cancer, only grows in an acid pH body. I've had enough experience, I do You know? And so, when you change the composition to alkaline, that's not a bad thing. But you don't want to lower it into acidic. You know? That's just a, just nonsense. I've got lectured that all the time for Nigel Laycock, Nick lectured me about yep. that all the time, the acidity in your bladder, and when I had yep. that, and he was always on to me, and I did, I listened to what he was saying, yep. and I did do that, so. Yeah. Put, put, put a slice for people with cancer, you know? putting slices of lemon. In 1930, there was a German doctor won the Nobel Prize because he discovered cancer only grows in an acid pH body. Right. We're born alkaline, and because of the things we use and abuse, our bodies are acidic, and our lymphatic system is acidic, and that's our, our sewage system, uh -huh. and things can grow in an acid pH body. You start taking lemon sliced in water, you know, Cancer doesn't grow in an acid pH, in a, an alkaline body. Alkaline body. So turn your body back to alkaline with the food right. you're taking and the, the health improves. And he described it as a, a stagnant pond. Exactly. It's it's a good stuck, one. It stuck in my head. Great, so it did. Brilliant, yeah. Who wants to swim in a stagnant pond? Okay, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. Right. I'd rather have a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Same with me. Yeah. But so, 
You go into your top S. So your, your top, top S program every, every day. Every day of the week. A healthy guts, a healthy body. I bug. use it every day of the year. Healthy guts, a healthy body. Mm-hmm. You can't overdose on it, you know, but less is more. I like this, and a lot of guys will use a pepper shaker. I like this one, just before it goes in. If you try and mix it, it doesn't go evenly because it's a fine powder. But if you just, I like dust and it's on the top, the birds take it straight away, no issues. Mm-hmm. Dogs and cats on, on steroids because of skin conditions, less than a month on that. They take yeah. the groomers, what have you done to this dog? Wait, go on, I'll get the skin. You know, mm-hmm. it speaks for itself. People with IBS. Yeah. But we can't say that. I've, yeah. I know a couple of people that take it. Yeah, yeah. And having, an issue with your bowels for Definitely. 20 plus years brilliant and all of a sudden stuff, uh, three days. Aye, uh, brilliant stuff. Yeah. The gut, the immune system, mm-hmm. you know, nutrients boost your body and all the rest. If you can strip all the nutrients out, you're going to flourish. Aye. Uh, the stories I can tell you, but well, I'm not going <laughs> there. So, going on to the, the small bottles. Right. This is a bit. Health. This is a bit that confuses. We've done the environment. We've done the we've environment. Done nutrition. Health. This is a bit confusing because I think the size yeah. of that bottle to do 15 months, a lot of people kind of get it through yeah. their head, it does 15 to 18 months. I'll, I'll explain what we do in the farms first. Right. right? We'll go into a farm, for example, for something like viral pneumonia or BVD or in, in sheep or we'll put 10 mils per head into the troughs. So what happens is the homeopathic product is knocked 30 times on the day of use, everyone's the same. You can knock it on your hand, on a table, you know, you're activating the homeopathy. Just don't use your head because it hurts. <laughs> right? Drop two mils. Well, on the, on you'll the hear bars, it fizzing, don't you? You hear it fizzing. You put it uh, here, you'll hear it fizzing away. Not often, sometimes you don't hear it fizzing, but uh, as long as you've knocked it, you've activated it. So we're going to farms 10 mils per head into the troughs. So for example, 100 head, 200 head of cow, four troughs. We'll put 10 mils, we'll split it per head into the troughs. As the beasts are drinking it, the water's filling up. It keeps multiplying. So what happens then is five days is at full strength. Six days is starting to diminish. Seven days it diminishes. By the eighth day, there's nothing there. It's gone, you know. So what we do then is we look to switch the immune system on its source. As opposed to looking at symptoms and wiping the symptoms out, we look to switch with this the immune system on. And you're getting a minimum. Every animal is birthed different how it takes it on, but you're getting a minimum three to six months cover. Mm-hmm. You know? And so what happens then is it gradually wears off. But you're getting the cover for that. You can't overdose with this again, you know. Right. If you want to do two mils every single day, you can't, but you don't need to. So you imagine the troughs are filling up. And all the time, and it's uh-huh. multiplying for that five days, six, seven, gone. So, what we do with the birds is, it's, it's the same way in the poultry. We'll, oops, we'll take 20 mils, we'll knock the bottle 30 times, put it into two and a half litre. This is what all the commercial boys are doing. 20 mils, two and a half litres, half an hour. They'll take that two and a half litres, they'll put it into 20 mil drum. They don't 20 have to mil wait. drum? So, 20, sorry, 20, 20 gallon. 20, 20, no, 20 litre. 20 litre 20 drum. drum. Sorry, 20 litre drum. Now, they'll have hundreds of thousands of birds in different sheds. It could be four sheds, it could be eight, it could be ten sheds. With that 20 litre drum, what they'll do is they'll take a minimum of a litre out of that 20 litre drum. And they'll wait the half an hour and then put it in. They're not waiting another half an hour. Straight away, they'll start to decant that. And soon they've got eight sheds, they'll do two and a half litres to each shed. Put it into the header tank and they walk away. And as the birds are drinking and the header tank's filling up, it's multiplying, it's going down the lines. Five days, full strength, six, seven days gone. If they want to do something else, you know, mm-hmm. they'll go in again. The same for us. Two mils, knocking the bottle 30 times, two mils into one litre. There's a litre bottle. You put two mils in, you're filling it up to one litre, uh-huh. leave it half an hour. It's multiplied to full strength. Now, it's, as I said before, you do all your birds at the same time. If it's in one bird, it's in them all. You don't send an army with and say to the teenagers, we're giving you bulletproof vest, but you guys that are older, we're not going to bother. No, you give them all a bulletproof vest. You're switching the immune system on on every single bird. It's not like antibiotics that you, have, you can't give it to chicks and kill them. You're turning things on at source. 
you've built them up. That's the difference. So after that, you make that litre into 10 litres, 20 litres, you know, whatever you need. 50 litres. 50 litres. Aye, whatever it is. Yeah. A litre, two inch in the bottom. Or an inch. With this, with the one litre, we'll leave about an inch in the bottom. Now, I'm going to start to put the bottles out with people uh-huh. so it's easier. So you've got this labelled. So leave an inch, fill it back up to a litre. Now that is now your reserve. That will multiply at full strength. Put it somewhere cool in the fridge. That will multiply at full strength for the five days, six days, seven days, and then gone. No good after the after eighth day. So that's your reserve. So what you've done is you've made up your 10 litres, for example. Uh-huh. You've done your adults, your youngsters. If you need to do baths, do the baths as well. But oh, can, you can do it. She likes yeah. it. Yeah. Them. And a bigger, that's just a small one, but a bigger one. Yeah. You can, you can, you can fill it up. Uh-huh. Right. Now you have two choices. My preferred choice is make it up in a bucket, water can, whatever containers, divide it all, do your drinkers, but every container, <coughs> whether it's one or half a dozen, <coughs> leave some in it. Mm-hmm. Fill it back up again. Just the same as you're as the one litre. Uh-huh. Fill all your containers back up. That's tomorrow's water. So you can throw it out knowing you've got enough to do it the whole uh-huh. again. And you do that for five days. You don't have another two mils. Right. That bottle will last you 15 months. That goes back away in the fridge. So keep it in the fridge or somewhere cool. No, that that right. will last for 15 months. Every three months to turn it on to, as a prevent. So another thing, see on. if you had the big, see the big size of that yeah. drinker. Yeah. Great big ones. Yeah. You filled it up to the top, see you had 50 young ones. Yeah. Could you pour that into that and not go back to water them for the week? Oh, yeah. That water, you, that water do them Yeah. Then? You wouldn't have to touch it? No, not a problem. You know, if you've got a big container and you fill it up, you know, leave it. Leave it two or three days. You don't have to, you know, that's multiplying. And it's yeah, I think with antibiotics, you've got to refresh every 24 yeah. hours and yeah. this is no like yeah. that. No, 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 not at all. See, go back to the troughs uh-huh. as they're getting filled up all the time, you know. It keeps on multiplying. But that's not getting filled up. That's, but that's still getting filled up, so but it's, it's, still multi- it's still multiplying. the one that you're still multiplying. Uh-huh. It that's it, so it's doing the same thing so in there. Exactly, it's in that or that. Yeah. So but as that's going down, you know, uh-huh. not a problem. But two mils. Because a lot of boys use it. those type of yeah. things. Because I've no. had a lot of questions about it, so I'll bring that one up. Yeah, no, no, that's ideal. And again, even if it gets soiled a wee bit, it's still multiplying right. away. Uh-huh. But ideally, you want fresh water. You can take a drink of soil water no, yourself. No, no. But you know, ideally, if you can change it. But some men are good enough. Yeah, it's clean water all the system, that, that, time. You know, if you've got nipple drinkers and that, as long as the header tank, not a problem. That's right. But what you're doing is you're doing that five days, job done. And every product you use is exact same. Exact same. same. Every, yeah, every on, the, on the same. homeopathic products, they're all done the, the same. The next question is, see you had, you've got a couple of bottles here. Yeah. You can't mix them together and put them into the No, no what we've managed that. to do is, because they're in the same area, like respiratory or uh-huh. gut, you know, we can put a few things that we have done. Like oh. the, the triples or those doubles, oh. you know. But, but we can't do it as in, there's a triple, there's a no. triple, put them in together and no. save his days. No, no. don't do no. that. Right. What to do is, because of the fact, because the way it multiplies, right, this is oh. the interesting thing. I always say keep two days apart. And the reason I say that is because on the farms, they're putting in header tanks. They can't flush them out. They could flush them out, but they don't flush them out. The water's constantly going in the troughs and that. So five days full strength, six, seven, and gone. That's why you go in five days and leave two days in five days. But because you're taking all the water out, uh, you can start the next day. Right. You know, you so you can say, right, okay, there have been five days, water's gone, okay. fresh fresh water. A couple of questions, Chris Davis here saying, how long does it take to get back to full strength? Within, within an hour, that's it. And when you pour it in, it just keeps on multiplying. And it says, going, why does it all die after eight days if you're putting it in new containers? Isn't it carrying on multiplying? No, no. It's just it's just the way it works. It's it's like anise. People say, well, why is does anise not so avoid it? It just does. It does, that's it. It's like I've said to everybody, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. It has done. The day I was born and it will do tomorrow. I don't question it, it just No, happens. it does, that's right. And that's just the way it's, it's worked. That's the way it's made to do And this has been done for hundreds of years, uh-huh. you know. But, yeah, what, what you're looking at is, when you, you do it for five days, because you're pouring the water out, there's not still a little residue of what's there for the six, seven day, because right. you take it out. So you can start 
technically on the next day to do your remedy. You know, if you've got a race coming up and you want to do them for three, three, five, you know, your birth sickness product, and then stress reducer, general conditioner, mm -hmm. probably just do it the next day. Because even if you get a day or two days before the race, you're going to get the effect. It's, got, it's, it's in the system. It's in the system. It switched things on. Ah. It's just relaxed them, you know. Doesn't dope them, doesn't affect no, no. performance, just so relaxes them. Going through for September, right? They're in the mall. What right. would you do? What would you use? Right. This is the commercial farms we are dealing with. All the birds at different stages, you uh -huh. know, whether it's rearing time, whether it's That's breeding it, uh -huh. time, whether it's laying time, they're all at different stages. Regardless of what stage you want to switch the system on. Right. Start and then keep on going. So the the two main products that go down are going in a storm and they say I can't even phone out for people phoning in. So if you've been looking for me, keep trying, honestly. You know, we've got a system up, we can get stuff out, which is great. But oh. it's just the volume of calls is just mag. Right. So 302 plus, just to put in the picture. 302 been, plus is what stress? Stress is just a general conditioner. Right? Right. I've been the poultry specialist for these guys, self-employed for the last 20 years, you know. And I only found out six months ago that they used to put into every single product the general conditioner as standard right. but they stopped it a few years back so when I heard this I thought I didn't want to put in every product as standard but I'd like to try it in the stress reducer so put it in the stress reducer and I, I know quite a few boys have gone on my stuff for quite a while and some of the pigeon boys and I said right I know you're on stress reducer try this stress reducer general conditioner and the feedback was phenomenal phenomenal the difference you're not just relaxing the birds. I used to sell the general conditioner to people, and I didn't know, I couldn't tell what's in it. But they used to all say, oh, more than happy with, you know, seeing the response. Brilliant. But I didn't push it. But since I put it in a 302 plus, phenomenal. Night and day. But the guys that have been racing for the last few years, I say, I've dealt with some of the pigeon boys for years, but I say, they don't speak to each other. You've got an edge, you're not going to tell us them. No, you, do. you can't. You know, and I don't give away names. No. It's up to people that want to spread it. And it's great because there's some good guys out there, really good guys, mm -hmm. who are starting to tell people. Because it's for the good of the hobby. We need to sort these things out. If we don't do it, we're going to lose the hobby. Oh, exactly. Definitely. But what, sport, I like to call it. But no. What is blowing me away is just the effect it's had on everything it touches. Yeah. Not me any medical claims, but. So every three months? Every three months. You're keeping it switched on. Mm -hmm. You're keeping it relaxed. And again, the reason why you're losing birds is because the bird that you've kept by because it doesn't look right is in these birds. And under stress, the 10 minute bird, they're all disorientated. What's going Comes on? Out in the morning. Traps open. You'll never see it again. It's uh, not coming home. No. You know? And if a hawk does go for it and scattered, it's even worse. You know? Whereas what I'm getting from people across the board, they're virtually losing no birds over the whole season. They're all coming all together, in fact, uh -huh. in a batch, uh -huh. as opposed to one or two and a few more, and a few, you know. And you can't even beat that. It's so destroying to hear the amount of birds you never see again. Uh, that's true. And it's the amount of money. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a cheap hobby. No, tell me. No, the time, time, effort, and then no. your money for feeding them. Ah, exactly. So. Exactly. So, so that's... Again, you've done the first one. You would, would that be the first you would use? That's, that's just the two. First. Yeah, that's the two. And then your three, three, the five, three, three five. Yeah. Would you could. use it even with you're using words. every bird in the law? Yeah. Stop. Some, some people. Some people are getting it two or three times a year. Uh -huh. You know, they'll get about here, they'll get about there, and then they'll maybe go into the adults or something and right. yearlings and all, you know, it's always there. All right. You know, or I had young birds sickness. Right. Uh -uh. You've still got it. It's just it's not showing out. Uh -huh. You know, the birds have had their stress. It's come out. It's settled down again, you've lost one or two. I'll take food away. Yeah, take food away, reduce the food because then you're you're allowing the, the gut to sort itself out with you know, having to digest. Yeah, yeah. A lot of boys are saying with the young bird sickness and they'll not feed for twenty four yeah. hours or forty eight hours, then they'll gradually Yeah. And they'll give them the water. You're giving the you're giving the gut a rest. A rest. And it's, it's, it's and you're just, not feeding you've reduced just the stress yeah. down then. Yeah. You're not feeding what's going on in the bird. And that's not a bad thing because it's not getting to multiply. Uh -huh. The bird's hungry. You're not going to kill it. The starvation. No. But that's the thing. You know, you're 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 stopping it. You'll still hold one or two birds. <coughs> <coughs> but I say, I'm giving it to people, and they're phoning me back 
hours later. Right. Wow. You know, but you're not starving it, you're, you're switching things no. on in the bird. That's the difference. But again, we've got all these different things and what I've done is that, that's the two. You're looking at 25 quid, including oh, postage from mainland, 15 months cover. 15 months cover to switch it on to relax the birds. It's nothing at all. <laughs> you know, and I say, keep it in the fridge. So, to combat after using those two, yeah. what would you use after that? You've got other issues, again. For this, we're talking about the full year now, we're yeah. going around the full yeah. calendar. You've got a lot of things that are always out there, uh -huh. and you can pick up. Some people, every loft's different, what okay. issues you have. Coxie, canker, canker yeah. salmonella, yeah. or whatever, if I've got paratyphal, yeah. anything like yeah. that, yeah. all these kind of things. Every loft's got its own issues. And say, when, you, when you buy birds in, you're bringing something slightly different uh -huh. in, it's going to go in all your birds, you know? And it will rear its ugly head under stress, mm. you know? And every bird reacts differently, and you might get one that goes down, you know? Don't kill it. You've got to find out what the issue is. Sort it out because it's anywhere in the world. So, what we've got is we've got a range of products there that cover a lot of things. And again, the second best pack is usually these two plus the three triples, which is your three floral, which is your um, chlamydia, your uh, microplasma, and chronic respiratory disease. Right. If you put them in a basket, that's one of some of the main things you're going to get. The next one is your cocky, coccidiosis, trichomoniasis, and candida. Uh -huh. And then the next one is your salmonella, E. coli, streptococcus. If you can go to source and switch these on, that's going to be a good cover. You know, a lot of secondaries, everything that was in the bird, the young bird sickness, is in, the, in there to be switched on in the birds. So when we got that, two years later, there was a few guys that used it for two years and were more than happy, and all of a sudden, I'll call them one or two birds up and turn around. We got another sample of dead bird, it mutated. There was septicemia and dysentery that wasn't in the first one. So putting the two together, people are happy again. But again... Septicemia is a big thing now. Yeah, it is. is. It is. It really there's there's a case you were talking about earlier. Even in humans as well. It's, oh it's yeah, rife. Oh, big time. It's, uh, big it's time. came yeah. this, these last two years. Antibiotics. <laughs> That's all the health programs are not yeah. antibiotics. Yeah. And it's not just in us, it's the environment. And I heard but, you saying about the, in the water system, put antibodies in the toilet, oh the shrimp, yeah. natural breeding, and everything's... Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the interesting thing is, this is going to be too. As long as we work to each other, talk to each other, you know, there's always going to be something going on. But if we stop communicating, we can do nothing. That's it. But the interesting thing, there's been an issue in the local area here. Mm -hmm. A lot of young birds like this. A lot, again, it's the word young birds, it's in all birds. Mm -hmm. And... What we've managed to do is we managed to get a, a bird that died with it and also some droppings. It's away at the lab. It'll be back here tomorrow and I'm offering everybody in this area, you know, I don't want to phone calls from all over the country. I've got about 40 of this new product to give out. Give it to the man who's given it to us and give out to people free of charge to put over your birds because there's been an issue with a lot of birds going to the same place in the mm -hmm. same basket, same transporter, and they've all come down with the same issue. So this is free of charge to anybody who wants it. They can get in touch with me, they can get in touch with yourself. Is this in Ayrshire? In Ayrshire. Right. Get in touch with Johnny, get in touch with, um, I think, Colin, Colin Nickel. Nickel as well, Colin who's Nickel. going to nice be staging guy. tomorrow. Yeah, I get to buy Colin. I'm going to have 50 remedies to give out free of charge. Right. Don't sit on the shelf. No, no, get it out. Get it into your birds. We'll get it to the boys we'll get and, it and give us the feedback mm -hmm. because it's not just here, it's 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 I'll, all over. I'll get it down to the boys and their yeah. club, and that'll get it all out to yeah. them. They can try it, and then yeah, well, I can guarantee this once they get that over them and they see the difference, they'll back at you for other stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've no doubt, I've no doubt, you know. I see the end of the day, all I'm looking for is see the more buds you're competing against, the yeah. better it is for everybody. Yeah. Right, and, and I mean in a bigger way because we'll have to try some to try yeah. and save the sport. Cause we're, it's, it gives you a level of play. You see this every week, people losing buds and they're yeah. losing buds and yeah. it's so destroying. Oh, I'll, big time. You know, I've got, I've got, my buds are all right. I've not fought, I think I'll go nah. through this year. I'm not going far. Yeah. But, yeah. there are boys there going, they've only went 160 miles and they're decimated. Yeah. And I'm talking oh. maybe 
the same maybe eighty birds, and about twenty home. Yeah, yeah. I'm here all over. How, how can you? How yeah. can that happen? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's no hawks all the time. It's no, doing no, that. No, 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 no. If it was that many hawks, you'd uh, see them dark in the sky. Would, old birds would come home days later if it was hawks. They'd go yeah. down and hide out the way, but they'd come back. But they're not even coming yeah. back. Yeah, exactly. So. Exactly. But anyway, going back to your products, those two. Yeah. You've got the yearly plan was the three o two, three three five, yeah. and then your one with the septicemia and that and that and your yeah. What's the other ones called? We've got basically you're looking for one hundred and twenty five pounds, right? With special delivery next oh. day. We're talking, you know, liter of clean and clear check mate, which right. goes a long way right. for the environment. Definitely, for your, right, lungs. Right. your top S that'll go a long way, you know. Aye. You'll see a difference in that, and you you know Definitely. it gives you a great taste of white dust. I'm quite you know? heavy handed with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but see, the bigger the size, the cheaper it is. Aye. You know, Aye. it's it's not sore in the pocket. So you've got your liter and that, but you've got eleven different remedies. This right, three o one, three o ones. What is that? Fertility. Fertility. Yeah. You, so that, we're only using that a couple of years. That's You're going to use it twice a year. Twice maybe. a year. So, you know, with ten mils, you're looking at. That push your fertility and your egg rate's better and your, your hatching's better, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, oh. yes. A week before you want to pair up, definitely. Right. You've got your 302 plus. Stress reduce. general condition. Uh -huh. Which, to me... Is a must. Oh, phenomenal. Um, you're looking at your 306, coxie wormer, right? You can't switch things on twice. Right. But it's the main of the wormer bit, uh -huh. you know. I right. even have people who give it to the dogs and it's like... Oh, I didn't know the dogs had worms. Huh. Right, 306. Then you're looking at three, three two two plus, right. which is your infectious bronchitis, your mycoplasma, okay, and strong. your your herpes. Right. You know, five. And then you're. What's that number? The three three two two plus. Three two two. Yeah, uh, respiratory. I don't know what three two three. Right. right, and then you're looking at your three four zero. Oh. Sorry, three three five plus. That's the young bird six. Uh -huh. The real McCoy. And then you've got your three three four oh, which is your chlamydia, uh -huh. microplasma again, uh -huh. and your uh, chronic respiratory disease. Three four one, which is your coxy trichomoniasis candida. Then your three four two, which is your E. coli salmonella streptococcus. Three four three, which is rotavirus, and a few other secondaries. Taken from a bird two years ago from Northern Ireland. Right. Appreciate the guy doing that. Um, more than happy with the feedback from that. And then you've got your three five oh paramexo paratyphoid. Right. And then you've got your three ten, which I missed out, which is red mite parasite. Right. So again, the same two mils, five days. So people are saying, oh, so much stuff. All you're doing is for a few seconds. Knocking it 30 times. Uh -huh. Two mils in uh, one litre, half an hour, making it up into whatever so, you need, and that's it. So you're doing this? Every week. If you do it every week, you know, if you leave the two days apart. See, no, see the 11 bottles? Yeah. You'll be doing five days on, I would do, that's just what I would do, five days on, it works up to you, I know that, but five days on, they've got everything they want in yeah. it. Two off, yeah. five on with the next bottle, yeah. two off, yeah. five off. So you're going to 11, that's 55 days, yeah. right? Yeah. Apart from your two, because you've got your two days in between. Yeah, yeah. So the time you only get back to the end of the, you can back through, you've got maybe about six weeks off, is it? Yeah. You've got... And then you start the cycle Minimum again. three months cover. So if you so do it for that, uh -huh. and again with the programme, you'll get January to April. You're doing it four times a year. And regardless when you start, yeah, you're getting 15 months cover. Uh -huh. So you put... The first time you've got five columns in each one, if it's the second week, right. write down the numbers, and then three months later, just put a restart when you're going to start them all over again to right. keep them switched on. So all you're doing is saying, right, okay, the star's there, mm -hmm. it's coming up, let's put the first number in for there, second number, and do the same order, and just... So you're, you're sick, and for people that's thinking it's not, it's a big hassle, yeah. it's not a lot of hassle if you're not... Because it's, it's, you're just doing water. You're That's just it. watering you're the just, You're just talking up water. Yeah. You're not talking water. And you water them every day. You water them anyway. anyway. Yeah. So you're not, it's not yeah. a problem. No. And six weeks off anyway yeah. to keep 
Well, the good thing is with six weeks off, if you're knocking against your head, that's six weeks you're no hurting uh-huh. your head. You know? The thing is that it's, yeah. it's a lot of, you're saying it's a lot of grief. Yeah. You it's all I mean? about, it's all about 80% is the, the uh-huh. gut. And what you're doing is you're switching. So with 125, you're getting 11 pound, you're getting 11 bottles. 11 bottles. You're, with 11 bottles, a litre of that and that, to buy them all separate would be 152 quid. Right. Which isn't so for no. 15 months cover. Well, 15 months But cover. to get them all in a pack, delivered special and delivered guaranteed to you the oh. next day, 125 quid, you're saving for And you've got a leaflet with everything on it. It all comes, it comes with all of Another feedback I get with some of the guys is saying, oh, which 301s it's going to They don't know, but you've got it on the leaflet. The there, there, it the, gives the you list. a list of everything that's there, and they say the instructions how to use it. But what I am looking to do as well is, is I'm going to try and do a wee bit of the Four Seasons programme. Right. You know, I had to laugh at a chap that has used me for a few years, came up to me at a, a sale just the other year there, and he said, Colin, I've had some season. He says, what's wrong? He says, 18, this is five fancies, 18 hens, 198 chicks. I says, that's no bad way you do. He says, you gave me the four season program two years ago. I said, hi. He says, I read it before the breeding season. And I thought, that makes sense. And he just followed it to the letter. And that's it, then. Phenomenal. That's more than 10 chicks up here. Aye. Uh-huh. Per hen. Per hen. You know. A lot of young ones, isn't it? Oh, phenomenal. You know, over the moon. So, we will get that, all that pro- hundred. it's not a lot of money for, for, for no. 15 months. No. It's a lot of, okay, it's good, it's a good thing. If you it? divide it over the whole year, it's, it's a tenner a month. Aye. No, it's not even a tenner a month. No, it's not, it's eight pound. No. Yeah. So you're talking eight pound a month. Yeah. You never make money out of health. No. You never make a penny out of health. But when you've got commercial boys now coming to you, want to put over all their birds, millions of birds. Remember, that the poultry business, it's a business. It's, a business. it's not a hobby or a sport, yeah, it's a business. Exactly. They've got to have it yeah, working. Yeah. If they don't have it working, you're not going to But what they're seeing is phenomenal. Aye. Uh, phenomenal. Because you've gone to you, their profit margins has grown as well. Yeah. But we're not making any claims. No, no, it's, no, uh, no, you can't do But that. I'm only interested in results. Uh, that's it. You know, and my attitude is, Money back guarantee, why would you pay for something if it doesn't work? Okay, yeah. Honestly. So, who would say is, to wrap it up, because it's about two hours. <laughs> Ouch. Right, so, what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do is, to try and make the sport, to try and get new people in. Now, I'm not going to put myself on the camera, I'll keep calling this, but what, <coughs> you'll hear me talking here. I'm going to put up, for new starts, this is, and no to vet, to, I need this verified with a club and a secret to say these are genuine new starts. So what I'm going to do is put three sets of 20 young birds up for next year mm-hmm. to genuine new starts. So that'll be 60 pigeons I'll yep. put up. Yep. And I'll put them off my race team. And there'll be no pedigrees or anything like that. There'll just be six, 20, a kit of 20 young ones for three new mm-hmm. starts. Say there's only one new start. I'll give them the 50. I'll not give them six, I'll give them 50. Yeah. Because I think six would be too much for a one new start to yeah. learn. But if I, if I can give them 20 each, if I can get three new starts, 20 each, it's a good start. Brilliant. They'll be getting good buds off my races, my top races, will no be, yeah. in that I'm going to be there for no be for, But it's letting them get to know about pigeons. No, no, brilliant. How to, the environment they're in. Mm and how we can keep them in the sport, a new face to the sport. Yeah, I don't care if it's a young person, what age you are, retired person, I don't care, yeah. as long as they're a new start. Yeah. But I want verification from a secretary that they're a new start, yeah. and I'll talk to a couple of people in their area to make sure that it's no oh, Uncle Bob's aye, grandson's aye. dead, this and that, but yeah. it's got to be, because this is a genuine offer, it's not just yeah. a, no, that's brilliant. I'm trying to get, yeah people to come in yep. into the sport, yep. new people. And I don't care where it is, yep. mainland UK or Southern Ireland, right. I don't care where it is, as long as it's a new start and we can get there for Well, I hope that anybody that's still on this, I don't know how many people have been on or not on, or if they're sleeping. 35, 40, 50. I hope, I hope you've had your duvet and your, your, uh, your pillow, so if you're falling asleep, it's not so bad, you will not be so uncomfortable. But please share this to as many people as possible, because that's a fantastic offer. And I say, as I said to you when you told me, it blew me away. I'm more than happy to put a kit 
125 pound kit to every person that you set up with us, so they've got a, 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 a flying kit. start. Well, that's great. I really hope that's that's Colin Ginny's a kit for every 20 young ones. I'm getting the three new starts, they've got a 125 pound kit for Colin, so the birds only going out with the young bird sickness, so they're going to pack in if anything goes wrong. I have a wee question there that says, Who's this from? Chris Davis again, is all the bottles 30 times tap? Or aren't they? Um, yeah, they're all 30 times minimal. Minimal? Yeah. So any, t any t yeah. everything's the exact same, all yeah. the small bottles yeah. are the exact same. Now we go on the farms, and I've seen it in the past, you know, you, you talk to a farmer who's traditional and okay, it's a, a business, and they're trying it for the first time, and they'll say, wait a minute, you have to tap the bottles 30 times. And they'll say, do you have to dance around the trees naked in moonlight? No, if you want to, you can, but you don't have to. But if you don't, there's reasons why homeopathy doesn't work. One, if you don't knock the bottle 30 times, you're not activating on the day of use. Uh -huh. If you use aniseed in the water, in the, in the feeding, in the grit, it null and voids the effect. If you have an issue with salmonella and you have an E. coli remedy, sorry, an E. coli product, you'll switch it on for E. coli, but you still have the salmonella and you'll have the same issue. So it's it's got to be the proper issue, uh -huh. you know? And the other thing is, it just doesn't do the job when it sits on the shelf. No. The amount of people, it. I've got a young bird sickness calling, should I start using the product? It's like, why did you not use it to, to prevent it in the first place? Well, I can know? hold my hands up to that, because I was in, it was April time, I remember I phoned you? Yeah. And I says, Colin, and I laughed. I says, I've got young bird sickness. He says, you've got... I says, I was trying all my young ones through before I started using it. Yeah. And bang. I'll not make the same mistake because yeah. as soon as I've got young ones in the nest, the parents are getting young bird sickness, right? Yeah. With the 335. Yeah. So they're all, so I'll go for there. Yeah. The good, thing, the good thing is you can spray it on the food. Uh -huh. You can, you know, when I do mowing birds, I'll put it in the water. Mm -hmm. I'll put it on any soft food I'm using, any greens, I'll, I'll wet it with that. But I also spray my birds. Right. And I use it to spray my birds. And as they're preening themselves, they're getting in at cell level. And when they're feeding youngsters and it's in their food, and moisten, it's getting into the youngsters mm -hmm. as well. It's got to go into the system. If you've got a bird that's no well, they don't drink as much. You want to get a couple of mils of the solution made up over the throat, get it into the yeah. system. Well, just to wrap up, lads, I'd like to thank Colin for his gesture of the, I'm putting three kits out, hopefully if we get three new starts, 20 birds each. Oh, and Colin's gesture of the £125 kit to each of these 20 young birds. And to thank Colin for doing this interview and hopefully with the coronavirus, everything going to plan, hopefully everything's lifted. You'll be at Doncaster show, Colin? Yeah, I'm hoping to be at Doncaster You'll show. You'll be at yeah. Blackpool? Yeah. The Dome maybe? Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping to beat all the. I'll be the guy with the mask on uh, and the carnation, the pink carnation. <laughs> and maybe, I don't know if Newcastle, would you beat Newcastle? If it's there, if yeah. If it's there, it'll be there. Yeah. And we'll try and get them to the Valley first show at, up at Hurlford. We've got a stall there for the, their first shows yeah. in October, sometime, yeah. end of October. Yeah. So. But it is manic. I appreciate people's patience. Um, I've got so many calls to get back to you, and uh, I can't get calling out for people calling in. That's it. So. You know? But uh, I'm there any time. If you leave a message, I will call you back. But just now, uh, it's hectic. But thanks again, guys, for watching. And I uh, hope I've not bored you too much. And get back to us about if any new starts, a genuine offer, and we'll get it sorted out. And thanks very much. Yeah. Good night. Cheers.